about to listen to the incomparable Win Twice Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Scott and Holly. We always go over, brother, and that's the bottom line. Dig it? So sit back, relax, and prepare to be entertained. Unlucky for some, the 13th edition of the Granddaddy of them all came in the midst of the transition from the new generation to the Attitude Era. The winds of change were blowing and the Federation ship was beginning to gather some momentum. Headlining the show was a battle of the giants as defending WWF champion Psycho Sid looked to end the streak of The Undertaker who was perhaps fated to become the new kingpin with the ominous numbering of the show. The original plans for the main event centred around a proposed rematch between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart after their classic Iron Man match at the previous WrestleMania. Unfortunately, it was during his run with the title that Shawn lost his smile and elected to vacate the title as part of a retirement that would see him step away from the ring to get knee surgery. With a reshuffling of the deck required, what we got instead was perhaps far greater than what was originally slated. Instead of facing Shawn, Brett would take on the surging Stone Cold Steve Austin in a submission match that is still considered by many to be the finest WrestleMania match of all time. WrestleMania 13 also saw the Mania debuts of future legends Mankind and Rocky Maivia, who were both involved in title matches at the show. Rocky would look to defend his Intercontinental title against the Sultan, aka the future Rikishi, and despite Rocky being portrayed as the face, the crowd's sentiment was very much against the youngster. Mankind would team alongside Vader as the duo would look to unseat Owen Hart and the British Bulldog as tag team champions. An interesting matchup given neither team was considered to be out and out baby faces. After getting crushed at WrestleMania 12, Hunter Hearst Helmsley returned, this time led by his manager China, to take on Goldust, who himself was coming off a mania loss in the bizarre Hollywood backlot brawl. With WrestleMania 13 taking place in Rosemont, Illinois, it made sense that the co-main event would feature the local tandem of Hawk and Animal who on this night would partner Ahmed Johnson to take on the Nation of Domination in a Chicago street fight. Pure carnage would be guaranteed, but it would be a treat to once more hear the Road Warrior pop on the grandest stage of them all. WrestleMania 13 featured both highs and lows for the Federation, but by 1998 the landscape of the WWF had completed its evolution and with it would witness the culmination of one of the most meteoric rises the world of wrestling had ever seen. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 36 of the Win Twice Wrestling Podcast alongside your host Scott and Holly. Hello. You alright Holly, how are you um, doing? I'm actually alright. Are well, you okay? I've got a bit of a cold. Oh. If you, you can tell. Yeah, I mean I can tell because I've been with you all day. But... Yeah, it's true. And you don't have it. Devastated. No. Although you did not suffer, yet. not yet. You did suffer yourself yesterday. Well, only a tiny, tiny bit, but Food we're fine. Poisoning. We're fine. Well, I was going to say, to be fair, bouncing back after twenty-four hours from that is fucking impressive because food poisoning has taken you down for a week before. <laughs> yeah, well, that's different. I'm not going into the ins and outs. Well, I'm not, no, no, literally not thinking. asking about the ins and outs. But you know, we're talking about each other's well-being. Yeah, just so showing you're all right. Yes. And you don't say you haven't got the sex line voice yet. I never do, Holly. Um, uh, it's it's never a good sound. It's coming the first out of thing for me to go is my voice. It's already yeah. deep enough as it is. I sound no, horrendous. Not, yeah, I was going to say, what what are your rates? That's what I, I want to know, know right? at that point. Very spenny. Back on the march through the Mania series. Yes, we feels are. again. It feels like a while for some reason since we've done one, but it really isn't. There's not been no. a gap between. Well, there has because we do but Mania, non Mania. Yeah. But it feels like there's been a few weeks still. Maybe it's just because I'm trying to distance my memories from maybe a marathon Ironman match, which we both thought was good. Yes, we to did. be fair. Sorry, I realised I should have done this before. Are you about to start this <laughs> Sorry, I'm not prepared. I didn't realise how freaking hot it was. I wasn't expecting your nipples to look like that. That's weird. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> to be clear, she's still wearing clothes. Thank just you. putting that out there. But, yes. Holly, before we go into the main course, mm-hmm. let's start with the crudités that's come round. Oh, don't, I'm hungry, so this is this this <laughs> only going to go one way. So what have you seen in wrestling this week, or in the last week, that caught your eye? Nothing. No, I'm joking. That gag's running old now, isn't it? <laughs> no, for me it's still funny, Fair because enough. the look on your face goes, 
Well, we talked about this earlier. No, we didn't. We don't <laughs> yes, do anything did. behind the scenes on this. Um, I'll be honest, not too much, because I've been a busy girl. July is a busy month Isn't for it? little old me. So, been a little bit busy. However, I've seen some snippets of things. Um, What, what would I go for That was first? almost English, that. That was good. Hmm. <laughs> um, I saw... Grayson Waller, is that his, that's his name, right? Yes. It depends if that's who you mean. Austin Theory. Yes. Obviously, they're a cheeky little tag team. A moment. town down under. Mm. And they received the slowest chair shots I may have ever possibly seen. Okay. From the one and only Cody Rhodes. Yep. Did you see this? No, I oh. saw them have the little interaction where Cody started so fighting with them. Slow. Like Grayson literally has bent over Hello. for about thirty seconds. It's just, and then gets hit with a chair and then slow mo like flies out of the way. I'm like, oh, this is a snore. It's a bit, and it upset me a little bit because I like those two. But yeah. I don't know. I can take them or leave them, to be honest. Yeah, so. fair. Was that the only thing that caught your eye? Um, really slow chair shots. What else have I seen? Oh, the guy that's been in my head for all day, actually. So I can only apologise. Lucky guy. Um, No, you know the song. Say his name and he <laughs> it's appears. It's always in my chuffing head. It drives me mad. But is it because you believe in Joe Hendry? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the thing about him. Um, someone had done a mock-up of his normal entrance video, but put Booker T in his place. Oh. Because every time Joe Hendry gets mentioned in NXT, Booker T loses his shit because he, he's at acting. He's not a fan. Can't stand oh, right, the guy. Yeah, yeah. that and the other. And then he... Um, I can't remember what he said, but Booker T put a tweet out going against it saying no don't do this and uh joe hendry i think tweeted back and said tell me you did not just say that so using booker t's own catchphrase uh, back on him, which i thought was quite nice good. yeah i saw him and oh, i'm just gonna call him elias elijah i just yeah but i would just call him Elias. Fine. so again happy that you know he's out there but i did think it was very comical what the song yes yes yeah we did, did discuss that earlier. yes i did like that to be honest, I'm not bringing much more to the table myself this week in many yeah. respects. Uh, I think the only thing that really caught my eye was MJF is the new AEW International Champion, having oh, beaten yes. Will Ospreay in a match that went on for about two and a half weeks or yeah. something like that. And then MJF was being given gas and air at the end oh, of the match, yeah, I saw that. but still lifting up the title, which was funny. I'll mm-hmm. give him credit to it. Um, but beyond that, I'll be honest, very little has actually yeah. caught my eye, I think. I wasn't even choosing not to see it, but nothing. And I'm sure, as we all do, on the socials and all that stuff, when you rattle through, I must have seen quite a lot of it. I saw yeah. Baron Corbin get assist shoved into the air by Apollo Crews for a, not a suicide dive, but a tope going yeah. over the top rope. He looked well happy. And I was yeah. quite pleased for him, I must say. <laughs> and it's nice to get a reference from Baron Corbin. It's been oh, a while, I hasn't miss it? Him. Oh, spunky. Um, I mean, but, I see him on my food quite a lot, but usually he's cooking. So, What's he cooking? Uh, food. Yes. <laughs> he yes. cooked a carbonara the other day. Oh, shit. Yeah, which, I mean... Did your panties immediately <laughs> on the floor? <laughs> That's all it takes is a cheeky, cheeky carbonara. What's he carbonara, did you say? Cheeky. You've got to be careful yeah. you say that. Um, so I, I imagine him to be mainly like... You know, you see Brock Lesnar doing his cooking stuff and it's just a fuck-off steak. Yeah, yeah. he's hunted himself. It's worth, worth a little watch. Okay, is it anywhere near as good as Asuka making a pizza? No, but... That's another level. That is well. I don't remember her being in that band, but <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, it's really good, really good cooking stuff. But apart from that, there's nothing yeah. else that really caught my eye. To be honest, unless no. there was something you wanted to mention. No, no. Well, at least next week we'll be able to say what caught your eye in wrestling. Oh, a live show. Yes, and I'll of have course. something to talk about for a we, change. We are attending the uh, chapter one six nine. Yes. from Progress Devil on My Shoulder mm. of course you remembered all that information oh uh, yeah you've seen pretty hey, look, much I know what time it is what date it is and, and where, where I'm going is. that's, that's all I need to know that's true and where you're getting pre-game food from so that's that was my deal so that's that's all I bring to the table I don't know that's quite a lot organising the, yeah. the thing for the, the group which is much appreciated and I'm sure Jamie would agree as well um, yeah I'm looking forward to it although I feel like it's going to sneak up on me and then it's suddenly going to be here and I'm going to be like oh shit yeah I've got a yeah, you like keep sun- forgetting, don't you? Sunday morning, I wake up and go, what am I going to do today? Oh, yeah, I've got to go to London. But I'm sure it'll be fun. And yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that the cold will have blown itself out yeah, it should do. by then. Because especially, and it's never nice to have a cold, but especially in boiling weather when you're already clammy and horrible as it is. Not pleasant. But anyway, we move. We live and we learn. 
So Holly. Yes. WrestleMania 13. Unlucky for some. Well. Well. Yeah. Okay. We'll get we'll get into that as we do, uh, analyze the show like we normally do. But yeah, WWF WrestleMania 13. The date was the 23rd of March 1997. Venue was Rosemont Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois. Attendance on the night 18,197 with a buy rate of 237,000. And there was a tagline. We've got a tagline back again. Mm. Heat. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's generally that the extent of it. Very Heat. much so. Uh, we, well, I touched upon it. I want to say it was during WrestleMania 12. Mm. But there was a match that I was really looking forward to you seeing this. Because I know you won't have seen it. Okay. We both... I think you're looking confused. But you definitely know the match I'm talking about. Because I'm pretty well, sure you so, have enjoyed it. Because I've watched the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but there's always the risk that you run. Um, so I was really looking forward to you seeing it, just to see what mm-hmm. you thought, because there's a lot of aspects to the match yeah. that I feel could turn you off. Wow. So I guess we'll have okay. to find how that landed. But I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, so we've got to go through the show chronologically, because it'd be weird if we skip from front to back. It would also really confuse my little brain, so... Well, I've seen oftentimes when I'm going through them in chronological order, your brain starts me. looking at the the fo- your brain starts looking at the phone. Now I'm talking like you. Your eyes start looking at the phone, <laughs> <laughs> and you've lost wow. your spot already. Yeah, that was an wow. unnecessary shot. I oh my god! I apologise. Do you know what's bad? Is that, that that you're mean to me? Yes, yes. that's true. Um, is yes. that I thought this will make me laugh. <laughs> It will annoy Holly, but I'm still going to say it because that's what I do. I lash out when that's I've got a cold. Apparently. Okay, it's fine. At least I haven't tried to impersonate you in this one. That was a few no, episodes ago. No, you have not. You enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> so the show opening. Back on the march through the manias. And Holly, I must admit, I've been looking forward to this one. More specifically, there's one match from the show. We've kind of already touched upon that, although mm-hmm. I didn't name it. As the show kicks off, we get a highlight package that plays in black and white and features a number of moments throughout the history of WrestleMania. You'll notice this is a thing that they really keep going back to the well on now. Right. Ever since WrestleMania 10, yeah. they will keep going, right, there's a history now we can reach yeah. back and touch upon and then kind of it builds up the, not the idea of the event, but it kind of makes it feel more grand than, not than it potentially is, but it does kind of do away with, yeah. it's the propaganda for it, it works. I was literally about to read the same thing. Oh no, I'm not going to actually. Oh. Um, no, I have. That's um, unbelievable. We're showing Liberace dancing at Mania 1, but they keep showing weird stuff as well. Liberace. Did I say it again? No, but I just, every time I hear you say it, it reminds me of when you did last time. When I cocked it up, yeah. basically. Which I was doing for quite a while. I really liked it, I'll it's be like honest. Lou Albano. I have to make my... <laughs> Do you know what's funny? Every time I say it in my head, I say that right. When it comes out of my mouth, I want to go Albano. Oh, it's because you're so posh. Oh, honestly, that's the Surrey in me coming out there. So after Liberace, uh, Bret Hart winning the WWF title at Mania 10. Sean taking flight from the ladder to land on Razor, to yeah. name but a few of the moments that we see. <laughs> this was a line from the voiceover that I, sometimes they just tickle me and I go, wait, what did they say? Okay. I have to go back and play it again. This year, clouds of hatred and anger have eclipsed the heavens and shed darkness upon the gods. Oh, okay. I didn't realise this was like some back. sort of... Yeah, Honestly, or Roman Colosseum or something like that is <laughs> surreal. The package, whilst remaining in monochrome, ooh, shifts to images of The Undertaker, Stone Cold, The Nation of Domination and Psycho Sid. Yeah, I was not happy here. But you don't get told, do you, the matches at this no, point? No, but I, it's literally... I might as well, because they're showing me who's coming. But they always show like people who are going to be on the show and stuff. Uh, mm. As long as they don't tell you what's happening. Yes. Although, to be fair, if you know it's an Undertaker match, up until a certain point, you know what's going to be the end result. I do, yes. We've witnessed here. Oh, another bit that I've actually snipped from her. Okay. We have witnessed heroes step down from their pedestals. And to accompany that, we see footage of Bret Hart shoving Vince McMahon to the canvas after losing a cage match. Mm-hmm. Two giants willing to shed their noble armour. I mean, I'm gesticulating oh, wanker, wanker for that one. That okay. just, that's ridiculous. Doing a knuckle shuffle. To shed their... Yeah, that's what... Um, John Cena was doing for the move, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Five knuckle shuffle. Yeah. The wanker. Yeah. Actually, he never changed the name of that, did he? The wanker drop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. That's uh, that's what I want my kids that I don't have uh, looking up and idolising. Two angry young men destined to destroy one another. That's another line. Signifying the showdown between Bret Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. WrestleMania is the showcase of immortals... And is a night to rejoice. But tonight, 
None of these men are smiling. Oh, that's sad. They should be. They should be getting some decent paychecks out of this, I hope. I know. From here, we now see the WrestleMania 13 graphic, which is engulfed in flames. Mm -hmm. The WWF logo and show heading are both set to appear like lava, with cracked rock lettering over a piercing red background. That's the vibe I was picking up from yeah. it. You're the interior designer. Oh. Hit me with motifs, <laughs> with flavours, with themes. What were you... What were you thinking? Uh, what what was this evoking within you? Was this awakening an inner artiste? Or? No. No? Okay, good. No. Thank you for sharing that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to lie. You, no, well. <laughs> but no. Most women do. No, that's personal. That's, that's uh, That was unnecessary, wasn't it? That was nasty. Although not untrue. In stark contrast <laughs> to this is the happy-go-lucky WrestleMania theme that has now become a staple for this era of events. Well, that's not my favourite, no. as we know, which we'll yeah. hear in the monologue before you get to this part of the show. In the arena, we get a fireworks display above the ring as Vince McMahon welcomes us to WrestleMania 13 in only the way he can, by shouting hoarsely. Yeah, of course. I don't have it in me today. No. The cameras pan the crowd. And oh, we there's going to be no impersonations today. There might be some. I don't think I've written any down, though, I'll be honest, because oh, we're not okay. in the era... We're not really in the era where... I mean, Stone Cold... There weren't too many people that jabbered, were there, in this? I'm trying to think... I think Vince obviously talks the most out of everyone, but there's no got... real... There's one promo that oh, yeah. stuck in my head. Yeah, I'm not. I'm probably not going to do that, but I've definitely got something. Oh no, I have got something in there. Okay. Air quotations. Literally, well, not air quotations. Just quotations. Actual quotations when they're written down. Scott, you thick fuck. The camera's pan to the crowd, and we're treated to an early fun pronunciation as Vince says the World Wrestling Federation because he can't <laughs> wrestling. say wrestling. It's always World Wrestling Federation. I love that. There you go. Tons of signs in the crowd, which really shows how close we are getting to the Attitude Era. Yay. A couple of which catch my eye. Oh. Brett who? Okay. And Owen Hart rules. Oh. <laughs> Is it rules with an S or a Z? Oh, it's an S. Uh-huh. I think it's because it's Owen Hart. Anyone else who's a bit edgy, they get the Z. Oh, I see. Before the Hardy Boys time, unfortunately, <laughs> this. <laughs> it's coming, though. Oh, well, It's uh, coming. Many things are. Vince lists the international countries that will be watching the showcase of the Immortals, which includes, of course, the UK on Sky Box Office. Mm. Although I think he says Sky One later, which would have been very exciting for me as a kid if I had that channel at that point in time. And Holly, we go straight into match number one. We do. No foreplay on this one. Just no, straight in. in. Straight in. That's basically what we're doing here. And my God, are they ramming it in? Because we start off with a four corner tag team elimination match. Uh, yeah. We've got the Godwins <laughs> with Hillbilly Jim. Yeah, I know him. Yes, you do. <laughs> if we just started and watched this show and you'd never seen the early wrestling, you'd be like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. Who's that fair, farmer? I did go, I know him. The Headbangers. Sure. Furnace and Lafon. Mm. And the new Blackjacks. Yes. So the first thing I notice here, Holly, is that Hillbilly Jim is in far better physical condition than his two boys are, as the Godwins make their way to the ring. Agreed. Phineas looks a little bit like a bag of milk. Oh, I've got to stop I wasn't saying milk specifically oh, because of your ew. aversion to <laughs> the substance, but that's he's kind of pasty skinned. That's hey, what I was going with. Ain't nothing wrong with being pasty. Well, I'm pasty as shit, but I'm not also <laughs> living in America. Pale and pasty, not tanned and tasty. Uh, well, thank you. That's the confidence boost I need today <laughs> after fake. saying that I'm feeling pretty crap I'm about super myself. super pale too. I look like Casper the Unfriendly Fucking Ghost. <laughs> like, there's nothing... The unfriendly Ghost. Yeah, I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling that friendly vibe. <laughs> Tell me what you know oh. about the Godwins. Um, should I know something? No. no. Okay. Um, nada. Okay, so Phineas I and Henry O. Godwin. Get it? They spell out pig and hog. Oh, God. I, my next line here is, why aren't you laughing? Oh. But you can't have laughed. So Sorry. No, that's fine. But that's, that's Vince there. Oh, you? God. Who's called Phineas? I don't think there's ever... That sounds like an Amish name to me. Yeah, but, I don't know. you know, each their own. As the Godwins finish their entrance, we go back to the commentary desk where Vince introduces us to JR and the King. Finally. Who will be joining him as well as panning to both the Spanish and French announce desks as well. And we get moustache. I actually was happy. It's Ray, right? It is Ray. See, are you so impressed with me? Very impressed. I, I've even written him down. I said, he's not ageing. No, he's not. He stopped kind of ageing as soon as he left, to yeah. be fair. Yeah. He, like, aged massively right after he left, and then he's just been 50. He's stayed that age now, consistently. Even if you look at him now, he pretty much looks the really? same. Yeah, I saw him do an I'll interview on Hannibal TV, people. I think. But, yes, Vince tells us that regardless of the language, tonight spells fun. 
Oh. Ick. Ralph, what? Oh, that's so... Me or him? No, him. Oh, okay. That's so grim. Well, to be fair, I did kind of look at you in a very unsettling way. Yeah, you did it eyeball blink. me. Yeah. Well, I'm still <laughs> Excuse me? I balled you. I don't remember. I balled you. I balled you. you. Gosh. Well, what's right. different from any other day? Come on. <laughs> I've had a lot of medicine. Okay. I know, I know. As the headbangers sprint their way to the ring, JR explains the rules for this four-way tag team elimination hey. contest. And when the graphic disappears, we see Furnace and Lafon hastily make their way to the ring. Although the nameplate says they're the headbangers. Yes, which honestly I knew because they weren't. But how fucking confusing for me who doesn't know who the fuck these people are. This is not the case, Holly. This <laughs> is my next line. <laughs> Before the new Blackjacks make their way to the ring, we're shown brief footage of 1975 and the original Blackjacks, Lanza and Mulligan. In fact, we now get taken to Todd Petting Zoo, who's standing with the current <laughs> version, who look all kinds of upsetting. Yeah. Just the gear and everything they're wearing, Holly. I know you're a fan of the smoking guns. Yes. I can't imagine this pleased you. No. And this kind of leads into my next point. Holly, do you recognise the new Blackjacks? Right. One of them, one of them's Bradshaw, right? I assume you'll have spotted the man on the right as being the future Bradshaw, but the yes. man on the left may have the man on the left the man on the left may have slipped under your radar. Yes, I was literally looking. I was like, I feel like I should know who it is. Not only should you know who he is, he was also in a match on the last show. Was he? Yep. Who is it? Barry Windham, son of the original Blackjack Stop. Mulligan, is back in the WWF, and in 1997 was part of this dreadful team with Bradshaw. Oh. So he opened both this show and oh, first shit, Saturday Night's Main no Event. I have no clue. It pleased me when, because I think I asked you beforehand, I was like, did you know them? Yes. You said Bradshaw. And the fact you didn't answer the other one and I knew you hadn't looked it up, oh, pleased me. Okay. Very much pleased me. I'm good. I'm glad I make you somewhat happy. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, always do. Never fail to disappoint you. Wyndham says that not only will they win tonight, they'll go on to be crowned the new WWF Tag Team Champions. So the winner of this match gets a match on Raw for the titles, which I always think is weird, because you're at the big pay-per-view. Why wouldn't you just have that there? Well, yeah, I guess they should have done it on a Raw to then get to this, but obviously yeah. there's a tag team title match later in the card. So I just always find oh, it yeah. weird when they're at a pay-per-view to big up a TV show. Fair. It seems a bit backwards to me. Bradshaw is laughing, which I assume means he caught a sight of himself in the mirror, <laughs> as he shouts that the Blackjacks ride again. Petting Zoo finishes this bit off by wittingly suggesting that it's time to play Blackjack. Boo! <laughs> Holly, if the smoking guns don't get it done, these boys won't oh either. Oh, God. As soon as the Blackjacks hit the ring, it's complete and utter chaos as all eight men begin to brawl to the delight of the crowd. Mm. Which they are actually quite loud for it, to be fair. That surprised me. It surprised me, too. As the action... Okay, actually, no. I've Ooh. jumped into the match. Okay. Okay. I need to know what your thoughts were about this level of chaos and people you didn't know being the opening match. Because I imagine, as you would say, your little brain yeah. struggled with this. Now, yeah. I'm not saying you have a little brain. No, you're right. I literally, obviously, they explained the rules. They did. Well, and JR it was did. like, anyone can be tagged in at any time. And I was like, okay, fine, I can understand that. And then, it, and then one of the things they did say was, oh, the last team... Standing wins. And I was like, well, obviously. Well, yeah. That's, well, that's surely obvious. You say that, there was something very dumb that happened in this match. Okay. And I cannot believe that they even contemplated making this as convoluted as they did. Okay. You, I've definitely mentioned it in my notes. Okay, so cool. There, I'm sure I'll go, oh, uh, yeah. But honestly, for me, I really struggle when there's like a lot going on. Yeah. And so visually, I was like, okay, there is eight people here to pay attention to imagine how i felt with these notes i, I tried but it, oh, it really stresses me out i can't no that's fair i can't do it I don't, was... I don't even like watching it it's too much going on give me a rumble and i'm fine yes but when there's i don't know why it's so different because it's more it's got more structure to it i feel like a tag that, team yeah. match I yeah I, I agree with you okay. i know where you're coming from as the action settles down we see henry godwin and bradshaw sart i've put this one off, and although the latter appears to be getting the better of things, he's levelled with a big clothesline. Fr he's levelled with a clothesline from Big Hank. <laughs> uh, why they called him Big Hank, I big don't Hank. know. His name's fucking Henry. Is Hank short for Henry? I don't know, but I've. Oh, 
I, isn't one called Hank and one called Henry? No, Phineas and Henry. <laughs> to me, they're two you've different fucking them, people. <laughs> you've been calling them Henry and Hank. I'll be honest, I only stopped, I started twice and then it's just Godwin 1 and Godwin 2. So it's like the Eli brothers, so twin one, um, twin yeah. in, twin out. Yeah. Yep, fair enough. Is it? Oh yeah, we'll allow it. Uh, JR thinks Henry is full of grits. And the big hoss makes the tag to Thrasher, who unloads with blows on Bradshaw, until his whip is reversed and is his head is kicked damn near off his shoulders. Bradshaw delivers a good big boot. I'll give the man credit. You are, I'll just make you feel a little bit better from your your spelling or your phone autocorrecting. Yeah. Um, in my autocorrect, uh, he takes a book from uh, Bradshaw. I don't think he can read. Not a boot. A book. A book, a book to the head. <laughs> Bradshaw wrestles his waistcoat off, which proves to be a surprisingly even battle, as the crowd boo him, but he does hit a decent pump handle slam moments later. That's what it's called. What did you call this it? This is one I always forget. No, as it's well. not. Well, electric no... chair, I'm aware I forget. Okay. You, you I haven't might... seen one of them in a while, but... Remember that when you go into I the next show. Do... Oh, <laughs> it makes me happy. Because <laughs> I've, got, I've got it written down as a note. Pump handle slam. Pump handle slam. In a clever move, Bradshaw tags Phineas in and raises his hands in the air as if he's not going to do anything, only to sucker punch the big, fa- the big farmer, the big farmer, excuse me, well he's still big, as soon as he gets into the fray. Thrasher capitalises with rights and a poke to the eye for good measure, but gets, <laughs> but gets back body dropped off another whip reversal. What we see next is dumb as a bag of rocks. Phineas tags Mosh in and now the headbangers have to wrestle each other or face disqualification. Yes. This was the dumb shit. So what these two chuckleheads do is start to trade blows. Nothing is stopping either man from tagging out. So this is fucking stupid. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Why would you just you oh, just go to different in. corners, wouldn't you? Tag and just, out. Boom. Done. Yeah. yeah. Stupid. Fine. Shouldn't have even had this as a thing. King, after witnessing a mosh pit, says Vince doesn't know anything about music and that his favourite rock group was Mount Rushmore. Oh god. Six out of ten, Jerry. Thrasher now realises this and tags in Phil Lafon, who the headbangers proceed to double team and drop him with a Holly What Is This Move called. Right, I've written that, I don't know if this is right or not, so I hope it is. I've called it a flapjack. It's a flapjack, and I'll tell you why I got annoyed there, because I wrote that down and then JR fucking called it a flapjack <laughs> right after it happened. And I was like, well, she hasn't listened to the commentary, so I don't know if she'll have heard no, it. No, um, I, I, I did this time. Mosh looked for a suplex but is hit with a snap variant and my missus is sending me fucking Instagram messages which is blocking my messaging. (laughs) And also, it was at this point that Vince references the Dynamite Kid on commentary, which was surprising because he never gets referenced on commentary. Mosh grabs the kick attempt of Lafon, who counters with a reverse kick, much like a certain Mr. Van Dam would do. And I forgot how to say his name there, which was quite intense. As Mosh stumbles and tags Winderman, the big man runs right into a kick to the gut, followed by a Northern Light suplex and bridge for a count of two. Nice. Furnace in, and he hits a very impressive Hurricane Rana on Wyndham. Yes. And then after this doesn't get the job done, leapfrogs the big man cleanly before his second attempt sees Wyndham catch him and drop him with a makeshift power slam. I enjoyed that. Little... That was a fun exchange. Little, yeah, really enjoyed that. Here. Leg drop by Wyndham, who runs Furnace face first into the boot of Bradshaw, who gets the tag, and the Blackjacks hit a double shoulder tackle. Off the ropes goes Bradshaw, who misses a clothesline, but the following drop kick attempt from Furnace is less than pretty. Yeah. It's bad, isn't it? Yeah. From the apron, Furnace looks to suplex Bradshaw back into the ring, but Winder prevents this, and we get an ugly suplex over the top to the outside instead. Mm. I sense shenanigans coming at this point. Did you, did you sense what was actually going to happen? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I missed that. I'll be honest. Uh, well, we'll say we'll what actually there, but... happens and then I'll say what I thought was going to happen because mine's slightly different from what actually okay. happened. As the two teams brawl, Bradshaw shoves the referee to the floor and the Blackjacks have been disqualified. It doesn't get much better for Furness and Lafon, who have found themselves counted out in the process as well, down to two teams. I thought they were just both going to brawl and both get counted out. Why oh, they felt the need to get I one see. lot disqualified and the other counted out, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, true actually. But that's what they did. Okay. Back in the ring, and Henry Godwin is going to town on Thrasher. Oh dear. Ooh. Oh dear. Cheeky. He tags in Phineas, or Hank, I guess, who he body slams <laughs> on the headbanger, but this only gets a two. Phineas does a jumping ring dinger, which has not been a common move since the 1960s, but his delayed suplex that follows is nice. Hmm. Mosh breaks the pin attempt, and now Henry is tagged in as the legal man. Yep. 
Headlock charge into the corner, sees Thrasher avoid the damage, but I guess there was a miscommunication as neither man seems to know quite what to do. No. This doesn't get more coherent as Thrasher is whipped into the buckles and the two just collide and Godwin throws a lunging forearm of sorts on a second miscommunication. Yeah, a bit messy. Cover off that gets two. Phineas back in, uh, sorry, Hank back in and <laughs> he headbutts Thrasher who stiffens up. Oh, hey. I didn't see that. Second, I guess the skirt would do that. Second headbutt likewise does little damage. So Phineas spits directly in the face from point uh. blank range which is immediately given a receipt from the headbanger. That yeah. make you feel unwell? I hate that. I hate it. That and was, it's not the only one we see either. Th- this was literally from like so half a foot away, right in the gross. face. I mean, even someone you're attracted to, unless you're in like so, don't be, don't spit in my face no. like that. That's outrageous. Mm-hmm. Wild exchange of rights until Phineas drives a knee to the. <laughs> oh dear, pretend I didn't put that to the gut before connecting <laughs> with the corner clothesline. Henry O back in and he hits a splash on Thrasher, but Phineas has raised the man's legs and I really do not know why. No. Because it's like, oh, what are you going for here? It's like, are you going to leg drop in a... Yeah, I didn't really he understand. He held his legs up like he was trying to recover him from being knocked out or something. Oh, yeah. Really strange. I poke. Boo. By Thrasher and Mosh is back in. Look at this lacy see-through skirt he has on. What a sexy outfit that is, eh? I'll be honest, it took me a while to even realise what they were wearing. Yes, yeah, weird. I've seen Mosh as well. I think it's the 2000 Royal Rumble. Mm. He comes out wearing fairy Madonna tit cones. Okay. And he just wrestles in that for a bit until they fall off. Okay. Odd. Mm. I didn't know that was a headbanging thing. That oh, okay. was just a Mosh thing. Okay. He ducks too early off a whip, however, and after eating a kick, is clotheslined over the top to the floor, which Henry also goes along for the ride on. Yep. As Godwin looks to return to the ring, Mosh guillotines him over the top rope. With Henry standing on the apron, Mosh hits a second rope springboard clothesline over the top and wipes out the farm boy. Nice move. With that landing, we get our first What a Maneuver of the night from Vinny. Mosh laughs into the camera and says everyone knows that they're getting the title shot on Raw. I wouldn't assume that everyone has read the booking sheet though, sir, on that case. Thrasher, who has ascended the top buckle, is used as a javelin, or a lawn dart, I guess they'd say in the States, by Mosh, and comes crashing down until it hurts inside, I know that's Hogan's theme music, (laughs) on Henry on the outside. I quite liked that though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I did as well. Another nice move, but Thrasher nearly lost his footing before taking flight. So he kind of like lost his balance a second. Mosh and Thrasher just don't care, is what was said (laughs) on commentary, but I'm sensing that the audience don't care, as they're pretty quiet now. Thrasher rolls Godwin into the ring and Mosh makes a cover, but only two. Tag back in and the headbangers hit a double clothesline as King says that Vince still thinks Fleetwood Mac is a new burger down at McDonald's. Mm. Five out of ten, Jerry. (laughs) It takes great effort for Thrasher to reposition the big lug Henry and by the time he takes flight with the top rope moonsault, the pig farmer has rolled clear. You really enjoyed that joke, didn't you? I actually really did. I preferred that over the other one. Mm. He's got. He gets critiqued. I love a. I love a fucking bad joke, though. Well, then you should love Jerry the King Lawler on commentary. <laughs> it's just one bad joke after the other. Like <laughs> Mae Young's um, so old that when she was young, the Dead Sea was just sick. It's classic. I just love shit jokes. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> Mosh and Phineas are now the legal men, and the big hoss drops both headbangers with body slams. Back elbow drops Mosh, and Thrasher gets clotheslined over the top to the outside. Phineas has Mosh set up for the slop drop, but takes a ridiculous amount of time, and this allows Thrasher to close line out of the hold. Mm-hmm. The action breaks down as even Hillbilly Jim is standing on the apron. From the top rope, Mosh sets sail and connects with a flying sausage mm-hmm. that Phineas has no choice but to eat as Vince decries, What a maneuver! <laughs> and we get the one, the two, the three. The headbangers are getting a title shot on Raw. Cool. Thoughts on the match, Ollie? Oh, it was very stressful. Very stressful for my little mind. Um, uh, Yeah, I I didn't mind it. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It happened. It It definitely happened. It was a happening. It was a happening. It was a little bit longer, maybe, than I would like, but it wasn't too long. I agree. If that makes sense. No, I agree. I scored it one and a half out of five. Well, Dave nearly agrees with you, except he's given it minus one and a half. <laughs> I, it wasn't minus anything. I mean, I don't give minuses. I don't. But think it it's wasn't minus, like a but... zero star match for me. I don't understand what criteria that's. But especially, especially when we see a score for a later match, which I cannot oh. fathom how he's landed on. Okay. 
But minus one and a half seems massively unfair. Yeah. I think one and a half's fine. Yeah. One point seven five wouldn't even be mad at, but I'm cutting it down a little bit yeah. because of how long it went. Yeah. And the best action in the match, apart from some of the headbanger stuff towards the end, yes. Barry Windham. Barry Windham did really well. Every time he was in the ring, I enjoyed it. And okay. yet they didn't really... Wasn't in there for that long. No, exactly. And they tried to be built up as, oh, we're the new blackjacks. Oh, we got disqualified, so we didn't lose clean. But yeah. you also look like schmucks. Why'd you yeah. shove the ref? True. Meathead. We now get an In Your House promo. Oh, yeah. We're now showing a brief promo for the upcoming In Your House pay-per-view on 20th of April. And that is the extent of that note. Good. Not worth going beyond that, I didn't think. Good, eh? Now, how about this for a bit of a throwback for you? Mm-hmm. Okay. We see Honky Tonk Man standing in the ring. The cameras quickly take us to the ringside area where we see Arnold Scarland and Lou Albano sat in the front <laughs> row. Captain Lou is dancing away in his seat to the tune and JR theorises that the captain has already been to the cocktail party. Fair. On Thursday. <laughs> yeah. what he said. <laughs> Now Honky leaves the ring and King wants him to come and join them on commentary. JR with a big nudge and wink says, You really like the guy. People would think you're cousins or something. They are? They're cousins, okay. exactly. HTM uh, is pissing aww. around with his curl and puts a headset on before standing once more to dance and sing to his theme. It's during this moment that I can see his nose is pointing in about five different directions on his face. Oh. Like you see, he's had many a broken schnoz, I uh. think, over the years. And he's here to commentate on the next match. Yes. Okay. I remember when you... Because you started watching this before I did. And you said, oh, I'm just watching A Young Rock. Mm. And I thought you meant the show. I'll be honest. Oh, okay. But no. You meant this match. Yes. And that match is the Sultan with the Iron Sheik and Mr. Bob Backlund. Yes. Versus Rocky Maivia for the Intercontinental title. Yes. What's quite interesting about Iron Sheik and uh, Backlund being out there together is that Sheik was the one that beat Backlund for the WWF title. Or the, was it WWF at the time? Either way, where Arnold Scarland threw in the towel and uh... Backlund never gave up. And that's how they then got it to Hulk Hogan. So them being on the same side of the fence, interesting. Mm. Led to the ring by a doddery Iron Sheik and followed by Mr. Bob Backlund, we see the Sultan who's making his WrestleMania debut. Yeah. Or is he? Oh. Holly, do you know who the Sultan is? Oh no, but I know I should because you also texted me this and said, "Did you look at the, like look them up?" And I was like, "No," which ultimately means either there's a story or it's going to be someone that I should really fucking know. The Sultan was played by former head shrinker Fatu, who of course competed in WrestleMania Nine and would later go on to become the ass shaking, stink facing Rikishi. Oh my god! And if you look in his eyes, you can now see it. Oh. But that was Big Boy Quiche. Oh, wow. Okay. There you go. Huh. Interesting. Yes, I didn't know if you'd spot that or not. Not, absolutely not, no. Well, there you go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we get the WrestleMania debut of the future final boss, Rocky Maivia, who runs his way to the ring. So there's obviously time cues of going course. on here. Full of energy and leaps over the top rope to enter the ring. JR gets very excited reading off Rocky's collegiate credentials, as well as noting that he's a third generation competitor. Yes. We pan to ringside where we see Tony Atlas, the man who, alongside The Rock's dad, became the first ever African-American World Tag Team Champions in the company history. Or in well, the history of professional wrestling, I think, like on that level. I don't, certainly don't think anyone did it before them. Bell sounds, and The Rock is titty-flexing immediately. Of course he is. The two men go face-to-face before Rocky lifts two fingers into the air and commences circling them, <laughs> either to start the crowd cheering for him or whipping up some invisible cream that only he can see. <laughs> The crowd briefly cheers, but it soon becomes awkward and is thankfully ended by the Sultan shoving the champion. Mm -hmm. The shove is returned immediately, and a series of right hands follow after the first from the Sultan was blocked. Shoulder tackle drops Maivir, but he kips up and returns to laying in right hands. Very nice. Yeah, I know you like a kip I really do. Uh, It's impressive, because my brain can't work out how to do it. No. Have you ever been able to do a kip up? I've never tried. Yeah, don't. Um, I, I feel at like this back ripe in, old age, I no, don't I'm more think thinking I will. of your neck. But like when you're younger, I think you probably could have done it. To be fair, uh, well, well, you're quite athletic. Maybe, yeah, you, so. maybe, but we'll never know. I tried to do it once and nearly died. So because uh, I got in a good position to launch and then launch, and then was like very horizontal and just went bang oh. straight back on the floor. <laughs> and went, yeah, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> and that was so just last week, right? That, uh, it was more recent than I'd care to admit. Oh. It was within the last. It was within the last seven years, I'd say. Oh, okay. That's not bad. Oh, it's a little bad. 
I don't know what I was, what lofty goals I was trying to achieve there. On hard floor, so I didn't even go on a trampoline or anything. It was stupid. Shoulder tackle drops my veer, but he keeps up. Yep. Rocky gets whipped into the buckles, but bounces out and clotheslines the challenger. That's a move that he would keep throughout his career, where he bounces out the buckles. Drop kick sways the Sultan, and the second sends him to the floor, where Sheik checks on his condition. Mm. Rocky teases, going to the top rope, but returns to the canvas without taking any risks. And it's around about this point I can now start to hear Rocky sucks. Rocky oh, sucks. No. So this was the period, just to put this in context for you. So Rocky joined, I think his first ever match for the company in the WWF was at Survivor Series the year before. So bearing in mind this is what, late March? That's four months that he's had there. So he's still very new into the run. Right. And the fans are just rejecting this. Oh, goody two shoes. Oh. And they turn on him. And not only that, the chants eventually turn to die, Rocky, die. What? Die, Rocky, die. And it's this that led him to join the Nation of Domination later oh. on. And then he turned into The Rock. Started talking about himself in third person oh. with the ego. Mm. And the rest is history. Oh. But that's how he went from this baby face to oh, that. Okay. And then he started feuding down the line with Farouk for the figurehead position of the Nation of Domination. Because the fans, as soon as they realised how good he was at being a heel, it turned him face. We see the same thing with Stone Cold Steve Austin later in the night. Yeah. He was so good at being a heel yeah. that it, people didn't want to hate him. Anymore. Okay. So there you go. Oh. Sultan pulls Maivir to the floor via the bottom rope, but Rocky is quick to what throw a number of right hands, but gets overzealous and misses a clothesline, instead connecting with the ring post. Drink. Sultan forces a few strikes at the arm. No, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Sultan focuses a few strikes at the arm and returns the champion into the ring where he continues the punishment. Big clothesline levels the champion, and a big palm strike also puts Maivir down. Stomp to the gut from the Sultan. Rocky looks to fire back, but is grabbed by the throat and sent into the buckles, where he then gets floored with a big clothesline. Really lazy pin gets a two. So it's like the Sultan just, like he's doing CPR yeah. on the guys. The only way I can describe that kind of pin cover. Yeah. Annoys me, but at least he's consistent with it for the most part. And now we get it, Holly. The dreaded, mm -hmm. the most feared, the inexcusably lazy oh. trap hold. Boring. But is this the only trap hold we get of the night? No. And nary a tubby man called Rodney Anawai used to be seen on this show. Yokozuna. Oh. He wasn't on here. We saw yeah. two different people do trap holds. Uh, At least one of his relatives shit. kept it alive. Yeah. After, oh, no, 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 no. Ooh. During this, I don't know if you spotted this, Rocky has a full conversation with Earl Hebner. Oh. He's got his hand over his mouth and yeah. he's clearly talking to him and then he puts it down and says, ah. Oh, no. It goes back to selling. I didn't notice. I was probably still just angry about seeing what I was seeing. Well, I was angry because I saw Earl Hebner. I don't get <laughs> me wrong. I like Earl Hebner, but I'm seeing a lot of shenanigans with this man's name on it. Yep. After the hold is broken, when Rocky elbows free back to his feet, he soon returns to the canvas with a kitchen sink knee to the gut. Big backbreaker from the Sultan as Honky Talk Man on commentary continues to tear into Rocky for being dumb and lucky and not asking for his advice. Do you know what? I'm just happy I can block him out. I don't think I noticed any commentary in this match. All I could hear was going, oh, hey, 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 hey. and I was like, oh no, that's not JR. No. That's someone else. I love JR. I was so happy to see him back yeah. on commentary. I really was. Vince, I'm, I'm done with Vince mm -hmm. now. I need a break from Vince. Big back breaker from the Sultan, as Honky Talk Man. Yep, there we go. From the top rope, the Sultan takes flight and connects with a headbutt, but chooses to taunt instead of making the cover, which he eventually does, but only gets a two count. Yeah. Sunset flip attempt from the champion, but this gets blocked as the Sultan grabs him by the throat and pulls him to his feet. I give it its due. I kind of liked that. Okay, you've, yeah, fine. It was all right. I, I had okay to pick something so far. <laughs> well, the kip up got a pretty yeah. good reaction. Shot to the midsection leads to a belly to belly suplex, which shot to the midsection leads to a belly to belly suplex, which gets a near fall. Seamless that you wouldn't have known. I thought no, that. not that at all. Really good. No, not at all. Reverse chin lock by the challenger, and the champion looks to be fading. Whilst Rocky is in the hold, yeah. King refers to the champion winning a Slammy Award and thanking his dad. King says the speech was so bad, even Christopher Reeves got up and walked out. <gasps> ten so, out of ten. So bad. So bad. That's, that's a good shit joke. Also, very much alive at this point. Yeah. I don't know if this ever fed back to him, but I can't oh, have landed well. So bad. Holly, <laughs> can you do me the honours, please? I'd love to. He's asleep. 
He's asleep. He's awake. Are you surprised? <laughs> no. Rocky returns to his feet and fights free. Ducks a clothesline, but both men connect on the second attempt, and Hebner begins a double count. The champ rolls over to make the cover, which gets a near fall. Sultan is clubbing away, and I don't mean that at the discotheque. Oh, I said discotheque. <laughs> discotheca. I'm so... <laughs> that's a fucking ridiculous discotheque. <laughs> clubbing at the discotheque. You can tell it's been a while since I've been. <laughs> what, clubbing at the, the discotheque? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I went in the 70s. It was good. <laughs> And channels his grandfather, so The Rock channels his grandfather, by dancing around the ring before further channeling his dad with a series of right hands that drop the challenger. And he celebrates with a dance move out of Footloose, I believe that one was, <laughs> but you might be able to correct me. Cut loose. <laughs> yeah, no, paint the sound red. <laughs> a floating drop kick connects and Rocky hits a big boot to the gut, or a boot to the gut. Right hand and belly to belly for a near fall. Float over DDT from The Rock connects, which I always used to enjoy. And the mm. champ has ascended to the top rope where he connects with a cross body. I don't think I've ever seen The Rock go to the top rope before. Early days he did, like this era he did. Yeah, so I don't think I ever would have seen this before because my notes, I'm like, top rope? Really? Yeah, I'm surprised he thing? didn't get a nosebleed up there, to be honest. <laughs> no pin, though, as the ref is distracted by Sheik on the apron. Maivir is arguing with the former WWF champion but turns around just in time to see the Sultan sneaking up behind and catches him with a right hand. Sultan ducks too early off a whip and eats a boot but immediately retaliates with a thrust kick that steamrolls the champion. Another lazy cover and this only gets a two. I always liked the thrust kick from Rikishi obviously even as Fatu mm -hmm. he would do that. So I thought, oh, you go, oh, that looks familiar but it never, <laughs> never dawned on you that it was him. That's uh, fine. No. <laughs> no, absolutely fine. Oh, now this is a bit you must like. Big pile driver from the challenger and Oof. Holly winces. Yep. This is a fraction away from earning a three count, but the match continues. Body slam is avoided by Rocky, who slips out the back door. Hello. Hey. And he cinches in a schoolboy pin, which gets the one, two, three. Rocky Maivia retains the Intercontinental title and wins his WrestleMania debut. Let's get into the shenanigans before I kind of get your thoughts on this one. Okay. Both Backland and what looks like I've written a Greek name or Croatian name uh, and Sheik hit the ring as Rocky makes his way to ringside to talk to JR, who congratulates him on his victory. Before Rocky can get the chance to speak, he's struck from behind by the Sultan, who follows up with a couple of shots to the back with the title belt. From the initial strike, JR has dropped on his ass, and the chaos has now returned to the ring. All three men are laying the boots into Rocky and the Sultan has now reached the top rope where he leaps and connects with a splash. In a blast of nostalgia, the Iron Sheik has applied the camel clutch, and for a doddery old bastard, he applies that move very, very well. Yes, he does. Very well. Yeah, he does. Whilst he's in that hold, the Sultan is just slapping away at the face of the champion, and then from out of nowhere, Rocky Johnson has hit the ring and oh. puts on a show in the process of dropping the Sultan. Soul Man Rocky Johnson. As he goes to defend his boy, he is unceremoniously struck with the Iranian flag from behind. Rocky Johnson is now being stripped of his shirt, because I'm pretty sure he would have asked for that and said, I need people to know how good a shape I'm still in. I mean, if you still look like that, why not? Just come out with that shirt on then. Okay. There yeah, you go. Fine. <laughs> Logic. Yeah. <laughs> As he goes to defend his boy, yeah, he's not down. Rocky Johnson is now being stri stripped of his shirt and it's now his son's turn to defend the father. Maivia sends Sultan to the floor with a number of right hands and the Sheik is gifted with a big body slam from both the champion and his dad before a pair of stereo punches put the Sheik down once more. A nice moment between the two men who celebrate the successful title defence, although Holly, I'll be honest, there was a moment when it was 3-2 and I thought, Tony Atlas is sat front row doing fuck all. Yeah, true. That's your former tag team partner. Pop over the barricade. Yeah, jump in, you're a big lad, get involved. Yeah. Sort it out. Yeah, fair. He was quite content to sit there, so fair yeah. enough. What did you think of this match and what would you rate it? Um, I'm sure that I've overrated this, but it's because of the end, I'll be honest. I'm a sucker for, I'm a sucker for a little bit of warming up my cold little heart. I'm worried you're going to say two point two five here. <laughs> okay, well I said two point five. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed that? Huh? Yeah, really, really, very much enjoyed that. Shock. More annoyed that I didn't get the exact score. It's almost like I knew it was coming or something. But yeah, so genuinely, this was your favourite match. 
well, so far. This, well, yeah, there's been two matches, fair point. This also probably gets a higher rating because the one before for me is a bit too stressful for my brain. So okay. I probably rated this higher because my brain could understand what the fuck was going on. And it pulls at your heartstring. It does, my cold little heart, yeah. Yeah, again, I say you say you have a cold little heart, but I it's do. all these little bits that really draw you into things and kind of get you engaged. No. Strange. I'll tell you what we didn't discuss at the beginning. We both watched The Iron Claw within the last week. Oh my gosh, we did, didn't we? That was silly. Oh my god, I should have said that. <laughs> that was unbelievable. We'll cover that another time, I'm okay. sure, though. So you gave it a 2.5? Yeah, I did. Okay, so Big Dave score was 1.25. Okay. I'll be a little bit more generous than that. So on the basis that I slightly preferred the first match, even though it went too long, Yes. and I gave that 1.75, I'll have to give this 1.5. I think that's a fair score. Okay. And it's not because it was bad. Yeah, fine. There was just nothing... Like I said... Rocky, the, you could tell there was disinterest in the Rocky character, and like we said, this is the the you've never seen him in this era, no. so this was a bit. So he came his first match in the WWF was Survivor Series the year before. So this is what four months later, five yeah, months yeah. later at most, and the crowd just aren't engaging with that baby yeah. face goody goody two shoes. I mentioned about the chance here yes. it turned into die Rocky die chance. Mm-hmm. This then turned him heel. He joined the Nation of Domination. Yeah. From there became the Rock shifted his whole character and the fans started to love him because he was so good at being a heel yeah we see this later with stone cold of course. stone cold has a similar thing but that's how the the evolution of, of rocky Maivia to the rock okay so it's not necessarily a bad thing but it's noticeable at this point in time and to me as well the sultan felt like if rocky was like the main luggage he's a carry-on yeah, it's just yeah. he's there like you couldn't you, it's just not the main part of it, really. Yeah, fun. And the main part of it wasn't landing with the fans, and to me that carried more than maybe it should have done. Okay. We go backstage, Holly. We do. A little bit we? of a treat for, for you on this. <laughs> we see Todd Pettingale, who I treat with the right name, standing alongside the special referee for the submission match between Stone Cold and Bret Hart. With that, you mm. knew that Bret Hart and Stone Cold were having a match at the show. Yes. You didn't know the parameters, you didn't know it was a submission match. You didn't know that Ken Shamrock was going to be the special no. guest referee for it. Now, knowing all of that at this point in time, yes. what were you thinking? Was it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? And why? Immediately, I went for, like, I died a little bit inside. Were you thinking? <laughs> so I assume that's probably on the submission match basis. Yes. And that's because you're thinking, well, I quit match with Bob Backlund and Bret yeah, Hart. That's what sure. That was fucking awful. Mm. Yeah, I'll give you that. So, yeah, I think immediately I just go, oh, here we go. Like, it's another fucking gimmick match. Like, and then I just, I mean, I go into it. Obviously, we'll get to it when it comes. But I go into it open-minded. Yeah. But immediately I was like, oh, great. But... Give me a, you're giving me a decent special guest ref here yeah. that knows his stuff. Logically, it makes sense, doesn't it? It does, and that I'm okay with. So Ken Shamrock, obviously a legitimate, tough guy. He was obviously in the first UFC. I mentioned that to you before. Yep. Got to the final. Yep. He was a submission-based grappler, so that was his speciality. So with this being a submission match, yeah, this makes worked. Sense. He did a lot of work in Japan in an organisation called Pancrase, where I think at one point he was the king of Pancrase, but he you know, did well over there. So logically... And as well, in a match like this, where you think it could get very physical, uh-huh. you need someone that's going to exert some form of authority. Exactly. Could you imagine it were early Hebner getting wedged in between these two beefy lads? Yes, I can. I'd... Yes, I can as well, but I'm glad it wasn't. No. So, one of the few instances where I actually quite like a special referee, because oftentimes I don't care for them at all. The only other time before this that I actually thought I liked it was Mr. Perfect. Okay. And that ended badly. Yeah. That was So, yeah. again, I did think, mm, how's this going to work? But hearing him and everything he had to say, again, I quite liked it. Because he wasn't like, I'm here for this person. I'm just here to do a job. Like I'm not going to be intimidated by no one. I quite liked, bearing in mind, he did obviously a very bad job at another one. Roddy Piper at WrestleMania 10 was fine. Okay. The fact you didn't remember it suggests that it probably went quite well. Yes. Because it went under the yes. radar for you. Yeah. Whereas, obviously, at WrestleMania 11, Ugh. not so much. No. Todd takes us back to Raw, where Billy Gunn challenged Shamrock, who swiftly took him down and applied a Fujiwara armbar to show Billy Gunn what he was all about. Or so he tells us. He then talks about the drop toe hold into the ankle lock submission, and again, he wasn't trying to break it, just let Mr. Gunn know what he was all about. Todd informs us that both Stone Cold and Bret Hart says they would have no issue getting physical with Ken, should it be required, but the world's most dangerous man says he will not be intimidated and is here to be an impartial referee for the contest. Good. 
I don't know about you, Holly, but to me, this set the right tone. It did. I was happy here. And I thought, well, of all the people, it, it just makes sense. I know I've said this, but it just makes sense. Like, and he does look intimidating. He does. And he's calm. He sets the right tone. Which makes for me isn't in- intimidating. Because imagine if he came in and go, yeah, it's a bit like Cockney Gangster, isn't it? Uh-huh, like very the calm softer and they collected. talk, it's like, how's your legs? They're yeah. all right. Like, yeah. It sounds like nice, but he's talking like that's it's like scary the, to me. Shit. It's like the craze, like when yeah. you watch stuff on them, they're so chill, but they're, but they're yeah, absolute killers. Yeah. Whereas if it was Hulk, going, let me tell you something, brother. Oh, yeah. oh, like no, like, no. Or that's what too they much say, energy. all talking, no trousers. Yeah, and I've seen Hulk Hogan's cock. Oh, so yeah. you've seen Hulk Hogan's cock. Have I? You know he's got a sex tape. Oh, is this the one sex tape I haven't watched? Seriously, did you not know that? <laughs> no. He's banging, I think, in it is Bubba the Love Sponge's wife. I don't know if you ever heard of that person. No. Radio DJ in the States. Oh. Um, yeah, it was a whole weird setup thing. Oh, and God. Hulk's banging in with his uh, less than 24-inch python-like <laughs> no, sausage. No, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, I might break I mean, the illusion for you, I'll be honest. To, I'll be honest. No, I'll be honest, you're not missing anything. Good. So yeah, I'm absolutely fine with that. Normally we don't really care for those promos, but this one hit all the right yeah, notes. So fine. it shows that they can be done well. They can. As well, mm. they, they're not they all... go from yeah <laughs> one to another. Yeah, Doc Hendricks uh, interviewing Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Uh, Doc asked the nature of the relationship between Triple H and China. Is she his associate, his assistant, his manager? What is she? <laughs> Hunter says that he doesn't need to know anything about it. But the reality is that he was smashing her pasty. Yes. At this point. It's a very nice romantic way of putting it. Um, I can't imagine what they did to ever have been romantic. I imagine it's like two rutting animals trying to force domination on the other. Yeah. Like, I reckon she's got him pinned down. He's probably taking a little cheeky bum finger. Not whether he wants to or not, because yeah. I think China's probably all about that life and then triple h will do his best to kind of like he'll time out and then pretend like he's done and then just tackle her when she's not expecting it okay i don't imagine it to be a a sensual not romantic no i reckon like he would be quite tender with stephanie Mm -hmm. to begin with Mm -hmm. and then railroad i'll be honest there's something about stephanie i go you're a yeah you've got the mcmahon jeans is all i'm saying yeah yeah Nothing wrong with that. That's not me shaming them, but I think no. I think there's two distinct lovemaking techniques between those two couples. Okay. And something for you to think about later on as well. Thanks. So kind. So, I mean, I reckon Tess was more gentle <laughs> with Stephanie, to be honest. <laughs> she was more fragile, bless her, at that point. She was yeah. younger, more innocent. Doc asked about the matter. I've gave, given that way too much yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah. But all of it was just in this moment. Yeah. Doc asks about the match with Goldust and Triple H tells us that he can take Goldust any way he wants oh. and that tonight it will be straight up. Oh. You don't go around threatening Goldust with a good time like that now, Holly. No, you. I know. Hunter says that Marlena missed out on an opportunity of a lifetime and he hopes she is good at running because with China out there, she will need to. Also, in this promo, I cannot stop looking at his mouth. When he... Go back and watch it. Okay, when he talks... To. He's really over enunciating his yeah. mouth, and it's I just can't stop looking at it. Cause you I'm, know that's what he he did like this whole. I just can't stop looking at it. Yeah, and then he like would over pronounce words and go, "I am the gamer." Oh, just like the gamer. Game, uh, <laughs> everything's uh, at the end because it's got to have some graveliness. To I it. just couldn't stop looking at his mouth. But have you noticed his voice has, feels like it's dropped massively? Uh huh. Wonder what could have caused that. Oh, is that a thing? Well, all I'm saying, let me put it this way. Have you heard Stephanie McMahon around this time? Yeah. You know, when her physical form changed, and don't get me wrong, some of that was obviously augmentations. Yeah. But she also got in pretty good shape as well, kind of beefed up a little bit, didn't she? see. God, I'd be fucked then. If, imagine <laughs> if I did that, I'd literally sound like... Hey, baby girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My voice is deep enough as it is. You're, again, right, we... We've covered this before. Sorry, I'm just going to keep saying this every time. Your voice, if your voice is too deep, mm. mine's too feminine then. The cold is kind of helping me a little bit. Yeah. But oh. you're, you're still in the, the nice register. Okay, sure. I'd say, I'm trying to think of who a female has got a really deep voice. Well, ironically, China doesn't. Have you ever heard China Yes, talk? I have. Actually. It's like weird, not that, but it's no. not what you expect no. at all. We'll go to the match. Let's. Hunter Hearst Helmsley with China 
versus Goldust with Marlena. Yep. Holly, what do we make of the great gear that Mr. Helmsley has on, and more importantly, what do we think of his music? Oh, it's, oh, it's not giving yet, is We're it? We're not there. No, We're not there in the sweet spot the for one. you. As Hunter makes his way to the ring, Vince describes China as a monstrous Amazonian, which had to feel like the compliment that she was looking for that day, the bit of the morale boost for her. He then doubles down and calls her monstrous again, and King thinks he knows why she looks like that. The theory he puts forward is that she was so ugly as a baby, she was breastfed by her dad. Two out of ten, Jerry. God. Jesus. We get a nice little fireworks display for the Golden One as he makes his way to the ring, and I'm thinking about a packet of crisps now. Golden Wonders, that's why. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm hungry. Other crisps are available. The special golden lighting and stilted camera effects I always thought was a really cool look yeah. and added to the character in general. Like I said, you don't have to like the character. No. But appreciate you can still appreciate yeah, that this it, works for it. It really does work. Gold confetti, the whole thing. Great. Mm, for sure. Thoughts on Marlena's outfit, Holly? Oh, it's just she's just a pair of walking pair of tits. She is a pair of walking tits. And that yeah, is a t shirt. Walking tits. A walking pair of tits, a pair of walking tits. Yeah, I mean you can't not look at them, which, you know, fair play, you pay a lot of money to for them so why not well but absolutely just always out what i don't understand it's not even that it's not even like how ludicrously buoyant they look it's the nipples are always ready always ready okay. like on a warm day good to go that's it well she, so that, that's kind of what i'm getting at so she's either always cold which she doesn't appear to be well if she is she needs to wear more clothes or she's all is she always turned on what always you... always ready to go good to know T- tuning into tokyo but just i don't know like yeah, but weirdly, even as a kid, nothing for me. No. Because she looked, it was so... Too obvious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong, it's obvious with Trish. Like, it right. is still obvious. But they've got a frame that looks slightly less ridiculous with them, where she looks like a... Yeah, she's very uh, slim. And I'm not trying to body shame her at all, but she's like, I feel like a xylophone. Like, just you'd see just ribs and then these okay. massive inflatables. Yeah. And it just adds the whole package. It's so... It's just not for you. No, it's just... Well, no, it's not, personally, but it just feels so diametrically opposed mm-hmm. that it just some, something seems off. And even as a kid, where you just want to fuck anything with a pair of tits, basically, okay. that is... That's still factored in. Okay, weirdly. fair. Yeah, being a guy growing up is... Honestly, it's so... We'll cover that another time, but Jesus Christ. As the golden confetti finishes falling, the bell sounds and the two men stare at each other. Helmsley is cagey and slowly approaches the crouching Goldust, who leaps into life with a clothesline and hits a second before unloading with right hands to the prone hunter. I really like the start to this match, because Goldust seems so placid. Hunter misjudged the situation, springs to life, knocks him down, good. Almost my favourite start to the match of the night. Yes, that sounded right. I had to listen back to that in my own head. But there's one that I edge this slightly. but It's close, to be fair. Fair. Helmsley ducks off a whip and sets himself up perfectly for the kneeling uppercut of Goldust. In the corner, Goldust treats us to some Sesame Street punches. Yay! After hitting nine, Goldust spits at China yeah. before kissing Hunter <laughs> and throwing a couple of further bombs as he loses his footing. Big inverted atomic drop from Goldust and now Hunter finds himself clotheslined over the top to the floor. Yes. Goldust takes a moment to play to the crowd before pulling Hunter onto the apron and driving a stiff right to the top of the head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> After hitting the ropes, Goldust slides under the ropes and delivers an uppercut that results in Helmsley getting his arms tied in the ropes from a seated position. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, very different from the way Andre used to do it. <laughs> yeah. But to me, this was like, oh, that's quite clever, Brilliant. actually. Brilliant. Yeah, really quite liked it. Goldust tees him up like an archer to deliver a big right hand to the face, make it three. And Vince said so charmingly, right in the big Grabowskis. Oh, yes. Good big schnoz. nose. Good is basically sh- what you said there. Good schnoz. Good schnoz. Good schnoz. Good schnoz. Good schnoz. Back on the apron, as Hunter is trying to untie himself from the ropes, Goldust kicks him right in the face, which does the job. Helmsley now tastes the ring post Drink. before being clotheslined back into the ring. Hunter finally gets an opportunity, and with Goldust ducking early off a whip, he connects with a face buster. Mm-hmm. That's the bounce, the, the, the bounce, the thing that he always does with the head off the knee, right? Yes, okay. correct. Helmsley gets ahead of steam but misses the clothesline and runs directly into a snap power slam, which I always love from mm-hmm. Goldust. Really good. The Golden One, thinking about Crisp again, takes too long to make the way his way to the top and yep. finds himself cut off. Hunter is looking for a second rope superplex, but it's blocked. Helmsley then blocks the front suplex attempt before sending Goldust crashing to the outside face first off the apron, and that makes a hell of a noise. Doesn't it just? Hell of a noise, really good. 
back in the ring and Helmsley takes flight from the top rope with a forearm blow that drops Goldust for a two count. Now, yeah. here's my second person of the night that I don't think I've ever seen go to the top rope either. I have, but yeah, you're right. Because I infrequent. wouldn't have been watching around this time, no, really. This fair. is pre-me, and obviously my, <laughs> my Triple H. The Triple H I remember, didn't they wear these tights? True. And was not this trim, so... I don't think I've ever seen him go to the top rope. You know him as the post-DX Triple H. Yes, I do. Yep. Yes. Hunter unzips the onesie, or the moo-moo, whichever <laughs> you prefer, of Goldust to hit a loud knife edge chop before stomping him into oblivion. Strong corner whip sees Goldust hit hard and collapses to the canvas. Second buckle whip leads to a swinging neck breaker and near fall for Hunter, although I think one of them spun the wrong way on this. I could mm. be wrong. It didn't look right. I'm pretty sure this is the one I'm thinking about. Abdominal stretch by Helmsley, who I now notice has a bit of gold face paint on. Yes. From getting... Oh, he got kissed, didn't he? he of did. course. That'll be it. Uh, where do we go from here? Um, da, 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 da. Abdominal stretch, yep. Hunter begins to pull on the ropes in the view of the official, who kicks his hand away, mm. and Goldust escapes with a hip toss. Yeah. High knee from Hunter, as Goldust uh, goes down for a near fall. Unique head and arm triangle hold from Helmsley who transitions into a number of near pinfalls before mounting Goldust. <laughs> Whilst pinning his arms to the canvas, Hunter throws himself up in the air but lands groin first on Goldust's knees. Yep. Suplex from Helmsley, who follows up with a running knee drop for a count of two. As Goldust raises his arms in the air, the crowd show him some support, so they're very much in the Golden One's corner. Yes. He reverses the position in the corner and fires off a number of right hands but finds his whip reversed into a DDT. Nice. Yep, agreed. Hip toss is countered into a backslide pin for two, and the small package gets the same Yay. result for gold dust. But Hunter levels him with a clothesline right after the kick out. Gold dust is running out of steam as he picks Hunter up for a body slam and drops him on top of himself for a count of two. Running crossbody from the golden one gets two, and both men now collide heads after Hunter dropped down from a whip. Helmsley ascends to the top rope again mm -hmm. and jumps at Goldust, who meets him with a flying keister, as Vince terms it. <laughs> That looked dumb, but was effective nonetheless, as Vince says. With Gold he didn't say it looked dumb, I said it looked dumb yeah. to be clear. With Golda struggling in the corner, Hunter charges but misses the target and hits the buckles in a pretty yeah. nasty fashion. Three uppercuts from Goldust, who connects with a back body drop and makes Helmsley eat the top buckle. Hard corner whip sees Hunter go upside down before getting dropped with a running bulldog for a near fall. With Hunter now looking to be in serious trouble, China slowly makes her way to where Marlena is standing. Mm -hmm. She has even taken or oh, sorry, she has been taking abuse oh, Jesus, Scott. She has been taking <laughs> abuse from commentary for most of the match, including one comment from King, who said the film Gorillas in the Mist was filmed in her shower. Oh god. One out of ten. He would actually go on to say he thinks she's cute and will tell her that Vincent, what Vince and JR have been saying about her behind her back. Goldust is looking for the curtain call in the ring, but Hunter flips over and looks for a pedigree, which also gets countered, mm -hmm. resulting in Helmsley getting slingshot into the ropes. Second attempt at the curtain call, but Goldust sees Marlena is in peril and drops Hunter to pick her up onto the apron from under the arms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. From behind, Helmsley hits a running knee, sending Goldust into Marlena, and she, is her, and she herself lands on China, who absolutely ragdolls the poor girl like a Rottweiler tearing into its favourite toy. Yep. Pedigree in the ring, and we get the one, two, three. Hunter hurts Helmsley gets his first WrestleMania win. As the bell sounds, China just deposits a limp Marlena into the ring and joins Hunter, who's celebrating his victory. Yeah. Goldust checks on Marlena and scoops her up off the floor before he falls back to his knees. Marlena is carried backstage as we see a replay of her mauling. Yes. And I, I remember listening to an interview that Chris Jericho did. Okay. Where they were talking about, or he was talking about working with China. Because that was one of his big first feuds in oh, the WWF. I think I've seen this. And he basically said she was clumsy. Mm. She wasn't very good. And even though people say to him, you know, you got the best matches out of her. He's like, yeah, that's great, thanks. But she just wasn't good and was a bit snug so she hit hard and right i see it was just a mess basically working with her okay and i'm just thinking poor marlena yeah poor marlena i mean she's a slim like girl anyway do you know what i mean so but she i mean she plays she played it off very well she definitely relaxed into the rugdolling 
She did, but I still feel like she might get whiplash or something. Oh, yeah, for it sure. just didn't look good. No. Didn't look good at all. But anyway, what did you think of the match? What did you score it? Do you know what? I thought I would not like this. When I saw who it was, effectively, I thought, oh, it's not my sweet spot. Am I really going to enjoy this? Yeah. I'd obviously just seen Gold Dust in some <laughs> shite match, the Mania before. Still not won at Mania. Um. Hey, what, who? Gold Dust still hasn't won at oh, Mania. Oh, right, yeah. that last one wasn't a match. That wasn't really. a match, was it? Yeah. Um, so I was a bit apprehensive, but I really think I've I think I've overscored on most of these so far. Really? Okay, what you got? Three out of five. Okay, I mean, I think in comparison to all the other matches so far, this for me was by far the best. I agree. This was the best match so far. Yeah. So Dave scored it two point two five. I give it two and a half. Okay. I think oh, okay, so I'm not very, too far off then. No, I think it was a very acceptable match. Yeah. There were some nice spots in there. Yes, there was. There was nothing overly bad in it. No. So yeah, fine. Fine. Yeah. Okay, we talk about backstage bits. Oh, this is pointless. Didn't hate it, though. I mean, it's funny. Backstage, we see Shawn Michaels on the thickest laptop you have ever likely to lay your eyes on as he tries to type a message of response to a fan. So, Holly, I'll tell you why this annoyed me. Oh, okay. This is my mum. Ooh. (laughs) My mum has worked with computers for over 30 years, yet Mm. whenever she tries to use one outside of work... All brain functionality ceases to exist, and watching Michaels hit the keys like a chimp put me in a very, very bad place. Oh, sorry. That's, I thought it was, it's annoying, but quite funny. After Sean hits three keys, he wants praise from the man sat beside him, and Vince is laughing the ha 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 ha. Mm. Not quite Count Dracula, <laughs> or whatever the Count from the Sesame Count, Street. Yeah. Ha ha. Very quick segment that takes it away. Fine. It, yeah, because it was quick. I didn't really care enough to, you know, write much I about it. I didn't care enough to care. I didn't, didn't. From here, tag team title match. Sure. Vader and Mankind with Paul Bearer versus Owen Hart and the British Bulldog for the WWF tag team titles. Yes. When you saw the two teams, yeah. what did you think? Uh, you know I'm always happy if I see Owen Hart and Bulldog together. Yeah. Very happy. I like those two. What do you think of the opposing team? Mm, again, open-minded. Yeah. I know, man. Like I, I know mankind. Oh, do you? I you know like... who he is. Do you know? Obviously, I know who he is. And I've I've now seen v- Vader. Yes, you have seen Vader. So I didn't really know how it was going to work. Okay. But I'm happy with Hot and Bulldog. So fine. You know, I was a happy girl. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love the whole Vader deal. Look. Aura, entrance theme, all great. He yeah. looks fucking terrifying yeah. to me. Until, well, yes. At the moment, yes. Okay. Here he is teaming with Mankind, and these two men actually have quite a history together, as it was against Vader in a match in Germany where Mick Foley lost part of his ear. Was it? It was. As Cactus Jack in WCW, the two men would also have a number of matches together, so it's quite interesting for me personally to see them tagging here at WrestleMania 13. I because okay. I'm used to them feuding with each yeah. other to now see obviously it was never as mankind yeah. and to the WWF audience that's new but I was just like oh okay because I forgot this match happened I'll be honest oh okay yeah of all of all his gimmicks as well this one genuinely actually did creep me out a little bit yeah he's just it's believable yes very much so also worth noting the first Wrestlemania appearance for Mick Foley huh, yeah, same course. as The Rock of course it is as the WWF Tag Team Champions make their way to the ring, JR runs up to them with a microphone and asks Bulldog if he was offended that Owen said he was smarter than him. Owen interrupts him, calling JR a cowboy wannabe, and tells the Sooner to leave Bulldog alone. Bulldog does eventually get a say and informs that I have two belts, he has two slammies, we're going to stay the Tag Team Champions. JR cries, who's the leader of the team? And as Owen nudges Bulldog forward to the ring, he says, it's me. Yeah, I did like that, actually. I did. I was about to call Bulldog an idiot, as I thought he was claiming to hold both tag team titles, but I then remember that he was also the first ever European champion, having beaten Owen in the finals of the tournament, to crown the inaugural kingpin, which once again took place in Germany. A lot of German themes, strong German okay. themes in this match. Not that you've got an issue with that, you love a German. Owen looks to sneak up on Vader from behind, speaking of, such a dick. to hit him with a slammy, but as soon as Vader turns around, Owen slides away. Very funny. Yeah. Why Why am I a dick? 
We're not doing this. Doing what? <laughs> yes, I have no problem with the the nation of Germany. No, all I the don't. people, fine people. All. Yeah, very efficient. I find. Owen looks at yeah, and I've just done that. It gets even better as Owen intentionally messes up a high ten to lock fingers with the bulldog before the match can get underway. And I'm convinced he did this on purpose <laughs> as a joke. Yes. He was known as a serial ribber backstage where right. he was always pranking people. Yeah. And um, he, I remember one time he got, I don't remember the details of the story, so I probably shouldn't start it. But I, I think Brett tells it and Owen was getting Vince really angry on something getting him called up and said oh this person like he was calling right. up and pretending to be someone else oh okay and getting Vince really angry and angry he was like fuck it slamming the phone down and after about the third call Vince went put the phone down calmly he went it was that little bastard oh no it wasn't Vince sorry it was Stu Stu Hart saying okay. that okay so he basically called up his own dad pranking him saying oh you're not tough I'm tougher than you but talking as like as if he was a rival right and getting his dad really annoyed up and then eventually in the last call Confirmed it was him, and he just says their little Beth did Owen put the phone down. I don't know why it sounds like Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> yeah, that but was interesting. Very, I think Stu's a bit when he talks, so he's kind okay. of got a lispy way of speaking. But but it was just the locking of the fingers, brilliant. On comms, we hear King thank the royal family for tuning in to see him in the UK. Obviously, Jr. quips that Lola's favourite queen is RuPaul. Nine out of ten, Jr. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Vader and Owen go to start this one off, and the big man poses before the two engage. Owen looking to be quick to avoid the Mastodon where possible, of course, because obviously that works to his advantage. Yes. They lock up, and Owen Hart is muscled into the corner, where Vader clubs away repeatedly, dropping Owen. Mm -hmm. Baseball slide from Owen off a whip, and he misses the first, but connects with the second clothesline attempt that merely wobbles Vader for a moment. Yep. Back off the ropes, and Vader misses a clothesline of his own, opening the door for Owen to hit a spinning heel kick that drops him. Crossbody attempt from Owen is caught and he is dismissively thrown to the canvas. Missed running elbow drop from Vader gives Owen the opportunity to attempt Hurricane Rana, but not a change. Uh, what? But not a chance. <laughs> Which actually, this move I need to give this move credit. So yeah. obviously he jumps up. Vader yeah. catches him, goes fuck that. Yeah. Power bombs him. Really good. He, so he doesn't pin immediately though, and I think no. on commentary they're even saying this is a mistake. You should pin yeah. him. You're done. Vader drags Owen to the corner where he looks to deliver a Vader bomb, but is stopped by a punch to the gut from the Bulldog on the apron. Mankind runs into the ring and drags Bulldog into the ring where he and Vader lay in the boots. Mm -hmm. Bulldog gets whipped into the ropes but fires back with a hellacious double clothesline to both opponents. Yeah. Double drop kick from Owen quickly follows and apparently all agree that Bulldog and Mankind are the legal men now. No tags. Yeah, there isn't a tag is no, there because I got go, so confused. They both went there, just call it quits. Yeah, Carry why on. not? Strong whip into the buckles for Mankind and Bulldog lays in the boots before a very impressive suplex. Mm. Vader has seen enough and is now in the ring, but incredibly, he is also suplexed by yeah. Bulldog. Yeah. Just shown off. Isn't he just? Snapmare and chin lock on Mankind as the champions look to have control of this one. Back on his feet and Mankind fights free with elbows and whips Bulldog off the ropes. On the return journey, Vader has ungracefully lowered the top rope, which causes Davy Boy to go arse over tea kettle to the outside. Yes. Vader made a meal, and I don't mean like the meal that he usually likes, <laughs> to drag the top rope down yes. to go outside. And you know we were talking about back in the, I think it was WrestleMania 11, about the meals that King Kong Bundy would like. Yeah. Vader is just meat. Ribs. I think it's a particular go-to. Okay. He just smashes through just red meat specifically. That's his pre-game feast, Okay. I think. So it's not the carbonara bucket that uh, King Kong has been going on, sadly. Sad times. Very sad. Owen is in the ring. <laughs> I really misread this, so I'll read what I've got properly. But I read it as Owen is in the ring prostituting. It's not what I've got. <laughs> Owen is in the ring protesting yes. as Mankind looks to strike Bulldog with the urn. Mm -hmm. Only for Davy Boy to hit a drop toe hole that causes Mankind to eat the metal instead. Mm. As Owen starts arguing once more, Vader now has the urn and hits Bulldog with it. The reaction to which from Paul Bearer is a fat kid being told there's still chocolate cake left for dessert as he gleefully claps his hands. That's very good. It is the sort of yeah. very excited child, isn't it? As Owen starts, no, we've done that. We get informed this is Bulldog's ninth WrestleMania appearance. This made me happy, I'll be honest. Which is actually quite impressive as he is suplexed in the ring by Vader and has to kick out at two. I'm thinking who will have more appearances than him at this point. So Brett, I would assume, would have a couple more because Bulldog was away for a bit. Okay. And Hogan. Hogan's had like 52, surely, by this point. So Hogan was in all of them up to and including nine. That's it. 
Oh, so he wasn't there yeah, in 10. True, 11, we haven't seen 12, him, have we, for a while? I think it's because we've seen him in other stuff. Yes. That it's actually been quite nice having yeah. a little break from him. So Bulldog's only been in one less than Hogan at this point. Oh, wow. Where are we? The Mastodon unloads with... Where are we? Yeah, oh. sorry. The Mastodon unloads with punishment in the corner, mm -hmm. and this is followed by a corner whip and monstrous splash. From the second rope, Vader lands with another big splash, and somehow Bulldog kicks out. Impressive. Yeah. We hear a few Bulldog chants as Mankind gets the tag and unloads with pointed rights. Big running knee to a sitting bulldog and a leg drop to the back of the head over the ropes and on the apron. Mm. Horrendous scream from mankind, like mm. that pig being slaughtered. Horrible. Always freaked me out as a kid. Still not quite yeah. sitting right with me now as an adult. Yeah. Back in the ring and a back body drop from mankind who tags Invader and prevents Davy Boy from getting in his corner. Big whip on bulldog sees him get stonewalled by the Mastodon. The big man climbs once more and takes flight but is countered into a modified power slam. Again, impressive, even though yes. Vader's doing all the work. It looks impressive. Yeah. Davey now has the opportunity and manages to crawl his way to make the tag. Owen, the legal man, flies from the top rope with a drop kick and he kips up from landing. Bloody love that. I bet you did. Hart looks for a sunset flip, but Vader isn't having any of that and looks to counter but misses with a giant whoopsie. Yep. Back to the top rope goes Owen, who connects with a crossbody for a near fall. However, all momentum is stopped dead as Vader now stonewalls the double slammy award winner. Mm -hmm. On the outside, Vader places Owen over his knee, and Mankind drives an elbow from the apron in a cool little spot. Big right hand drops Owen hard, and he really slaps the mat hard as yes. it lands. Mankind now looks to suplex Owen in the ring, and this begins a back and forth that results in Owen getting guillotined over the top rope. Mm -hmm. Back on the floor and Mankind begins biting away at the forehead of Owen right in front of his worried looking mother Helen and his zero fucks given dad yes. Stu. <laughs> the action returns to the ring and Mankind has a modified camel clutch locked in as the fans start to rally for Owen. Yep. Hart fires free but is quickly shut down. However, he manages to counter a neck breaker into a DDT. Owen hits the ropes but the splash finds only the knees of Mankind. Near fall. Mankind whips Owen sternum first into the buckles and they appear to collide heads before Owen hits a spinning heel kick that gets a count of two. Yep. Vader gets the tag, although he is practically already in the ring, and Owen is treated to some clubbing blows by the big bear. Suplex attempt from Vader sees Owen counter out and hit another spinning heel kick. This, this is only... Sorry, but this is every all my notes. Any time it mentions heart, yeah. that's all he's doing. Yeah. Every single time at the minute. He hits it a few times. Yeah. This is only a temporary hindrance to Vader, who connects with an elbow drop to the back. Mankind is tagged in and throws Owen to the outside. Bulldog is complaining to the ref as the lunatic slides to the outside and sprints at Owen, only to be caught in a belly-to-belly -belly throw on the floor. Again, Mankind, Mick Foley sacrificing his body yeah, needlessly for the industry. Very nice insiguri. Has both men down and now Bulldog gets the tag and starts unloading strikes to both men. Oh, my favourite thing's coming. <laughs> In the melee, Vader's mask comes off and we mm. get a double noggin knocker from the double um, champ. It's old school, I love it him. It really is. I love him. And, but also here is the point for me where Vader becomes not even like, just, I don't know, he just loses something for me here. Huh? What, from the double noggin knocker? No, from his mask coming off. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know why. Okay. Strange. It makes no difference whatsoever. Apparently, but... that thing bloody stunk as well, by the way. He never washed it. Oh, nice. So it was horrendous. Sweaty. That's why I vomit and stuff. Gross. Ew. Where have we gone from here? Back elbow drop. No. Yeah, back elbow drops Mankind, and he's thrown face first into the ring post twice. Drink the first... twice, please. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. The first of which looked awesome. Bulldog looks for a running power slam, but from the position, Mankind gets the mandible claw locked in. Good counter. Mm -hmm. Likes it. Yeah. King says that Owen will figure something out, but Vader gives him a running dick kick to disprove that theory. Vader whips Owen and stonewalls him, causing him to fall back into the bulldog and mankind, which knocks them in an ungainly heap through the ropes oh, into the floor. Yeah. On the floor, mankind reapplies the claw, and as Vader and Owen fight in the ring, the ref rightly counts out both mankind and bulldog on the floor. Mm -hmm. This one is over. I hate an unfinish at WrestleMania, I really do. Yeah. I would agree that normally I do. But... But weirdly, this one, I didn't mind. Well, what I thought was weird about this match, to me personally, was that they neither team was a face. Okay. It was kind of two heel teams, so who do you okay. get behind? Oh, 
Oh, I know. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> so this one's over. As the bell sounds, Owen looks to pry Mankind off Bulldog by the hair, but is stopped by a meaty forearm from Vader, who then struggles to get Mankind to release the hold also by the hair. Yeah. As Vader and Mankind hug and raise their arms in the aisle way, Owen checks on the condition of his brother-in-law. I feel... Vader and Mankind hugging was just weird in general. Don't do that. No. You were both supposed to it be It kind monsters. of breaks, like, yeah, it's character. Yeah, doesn't, right, yeah. doesn't look right to me. Holly. Hello. I know you said the end of the match wasn't as bad as you were thinking. Yeah. What did you think of the match overall, and what did you score it? I really liked it. I'll be honest. Didn't okay. ex- I didn't I didn't say I wouldn't expect to, but I just I had a little bit of a lower hope because of, not because of Hart and Bulldog, but yeah. because of Vader and Mankind, I'll be honest. Okay. But I actually really enjoyed it. So far, my favourite match. Okay, so with that, what did you score it? 3.25. Okay. I know, I know that's very generous. Oh, that's I know. So, Big Dave, 2.5. Okay. I agree with Dave, 2.5. I can't distinguish this from the match that came before it. It was uh, good, okay. but there was nothing... Yeah, just for me personally, it's better. But then also that could be... The non-finish. Because... Of who it is. Yeah, okay. So I'm aware I'm very generous with points when it's certain people that I like. I thought that was... Oh, sorry, I thought you were halfway through a point. I was waiting for the rest no, of it. Okay. I like, and then... But, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, no, no, I'm no. generous with certain people that I like. Yes, yes, we've, we've noticed that with test matches. <sighs> we get a nice little promo package now. Yeah. Are you getting excited for this? No. Are we, oh, Okay. Oh, it's just we'll the, the show there, ladies and no, gentlemen. No, it's just the promo. It's just, just give me the match. I don't need to see the story because it's, <laughs> it's already happened. But sometimes you enjoy that. You said sometimes, it kind of gives you context. Yeah. I don't need it for that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, women are so difficult. You're an enigma, Holly. Oh, I know. It makes no sense. Yeah, because other times you'll other argue times it for the I love it, reason. But, yeah, yeah, I know. So we get shown footage of Bret Hart uh, and... Oh, sorry, Bret Hart highlights specifically is the voice of Todd Pettengale tells us that it must be difficult to have had 10 years of success with the company only to have six months away and return to the challenges that the hitman has experienced. Sure. Bret's voice cuts in telling us that he was screwed by Michaels, the boy toy, screwed by Austin at the Royal Rumble and screwed by the WWF. He says there was a new motto in the Federation, you scratch my back and I'll stab yours. The footage shows Brett having a meltdown on Raw before it transitions to Stone Cold, saying that Brett has done all that Brett has done since he returned is cry and whine. Mm-hmm. We now see Stone Cold continually assault Brett, and he tells the audience that on Hart's best day he couldn't lace Stone Cold's boots, and he'll prove it to the world, and that is the bottom line. He's, I would, I listen to him. Yes. Do you know what I mean? As in, he's, I would say he's the first person since Jake, but. He's someone that gives a promo that I will listen to. Fair enough. Draws me in with his husky tones. And that's the bum line. <laughs> that's very good. It didn't sound that good. I think the cold's helping a little bit oh. there. The package now goes on to suggest that maybe it's Bret Hart who has changed. And we see him strike Pat Patterson, causing Vince to become irate on commentary, calling him a no good, dirty son of a... before getting cut off, and the hitman returns to Austin to continue the brawl. Cheeky. Todd questions what has happened to Brett. It says that in order to conquer this change, he will have to beat Stone Cold. The VT is over, and we return to the ring, where we see the special guest referee for the match, Ken Shamrock, who's wearing an extra schmedium referee top. Oh, his clothes are, like, sprayed on here. See his heartbeat, Holly. Honestly. It's ridiculous. So toit. It toit. It toit, toit like a toiger. Toit like a toiger. It's definitely... And it's, oh, it's like the, leg- the shorts as well. They're like a lycra. Yeah. Might as well just, yeah, so tight. Might as well what? Just not wear anything. It's so tight. Would that? Would you have found that distracting in the match though? To be honest, I actually don't think I would like that. So, what, imagine a naked referee. Oh yeah, what's the point? No, I agree. But like, just oh, and the stipulation of this match: naked referee. <laughs> Earl Hebner's there. <laughs> Earl Hebner is there. He's holding a stick of butter. You don't know why. A stick of butter. You, you don't know why, <laughs> but that, he's ready to go. He is ready that. to go. Okay. Now, the match, Holly, that I will readily admit I was very excited okay. to see you watch, or well, not see you watch, <laughs> but know you've watched it and yep. get your thoughts on it. Yes. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Brett the Hitman Hart mm-hmm. in a submission match with a special guest referee, Ken Shamrock. Yeah. The cameras swiftly take us to the gorilla position, where we see Stone Cold marching towards the entrance, trash talking and ready to go to war. 
From the hallway, we see a pane of Austin 316 glass that shatters as Stone Cold approaches, and this gave me goosebumps. This is the Stone Cold I remember. This. Because like, when we watched him last time, yep. I was like, I don't know him yet, but now we're here. Just fantastic. Every detail about this entrance is oh, excellent. So good. Excellent. As Austin enters uh, the ring, he has words with Shamrock, who indicates he's the official. JR on comms. Austin says he's 6'2", and there isn't a man alive who will make him say I quit, and I believe him. Mm -hmm. Fireworks above the entrance as the screeching electric guitar tells us Bret Hart is on his way. We get a bit of a delay before he emerges over the broken glass and receives a very good pop from the crowd. Vince tells us it's a mixed reaction, but I'll be honest, it mostly sounded like cheers to me. Yeah, it did. What I will say, though, Mm. Austin's entrance is great, phenomenal. Bret Hart's entrance is fine. Two years in a row, I feel like he's been outdone on an entrance now. God, yeah. Yeah, I'd agree, actually. Because he got... Shawn Michaels got the special zip wire entrance into the crowd. Stone Cold gets the broken glass, which is just great. Yeah. As is the... No, as is customary, Bret places his shades on a kid in the front row. And I hate that child. Why wasn't it ever me? Aww. Was I ever in a front row show that Bret was at? No. No. Bret looks all business as he enters the ring. As we get a view over his shoulder of Austin, or sorry, over the shoulder of Austin, I'm going to start again. This okay. bit deserves to justice. Uh, well, what? Deserves uh, okay. justice and doing right, even though I fucked it up the second time as well. Brett looks all business, and as he enters the ring, we get a view over the shoulder of Austin, who's leaning against the buckles. Brett slowly walks towards Austin, who turns his head as though Brett is beneath him, but springs to life with a tackle to take the hitman down. Yeah, I like that. This is the best start of the match on the show, by far, yeah. already. This is exactly how this match should start between these two men, and we see Austin unloading with right hands on the canvas. Mm-hmm. They change position as Brett now has the mount and delivers some rights of his own. To me, this is like a blood feud, really. They're, they're supposed to hate each other. The characters yes. are so polar opposite yeah. that this makes sense for the match to start yeah. like this, an out-and-out out brawl. Vince makes a very salient point on commentary that Austin is by no means a submission wrestler, mm-hmm. which would automatically give Bret Hart an advantage. Yes. Brett's obviously got the sharpshooter. Mm-hmm. Austin used to have, as the ringmaster, the million dollar dream. Okay. But he's not known to have submission yes. holds. The two men roll to the floor where they continue to exchange right hands. Austin slaps on the side headlock but is immediately shoved off by Brett and hits the ring post face first. Drink. Brett looks to suplex Austin into the fans but this gets blocked and the hitman finds himself dropped crotch first on the guardrail instead, nice. kicking a security member as he does so. Yeah. Stone Cold sends Brett crashing into the fans with a running clothesline and damn near goes over the barricade himself with the amount of force he used. Mm-hmm. Tony Atlas and Lou Albano clear some space as the f- in the fans as Shamrock shoves a fat lad with a bowl haircut out of the way <laughs> to also shield some of the fans from the action. Shamrock does a good job while they're in the crowd of he actually really getting people out of the way. Yeah, I wouldn't fuck with him. No, absolutely not. Well, Brett's... Sorry? No, you wouldn't, would you? No, you wouldn't. no. no. Brett staggers into the crowd. Oh, you did that. Brett staggers into the crowd, and Austin follows, making sure to rob a fan of a drink of Coke to take I, a sip. That was brilliant. And throw the rest of the container onto his opponent. I was secretly hoping it was beer. Yes, but I'm pretty sure it was Coke. I, I did enjoy that though. Yes, it was very good. Series of boots from Austin to the fallen heart, who gets dropped throat first over a barrier separating the lower tier from the floor seats. Brett now starts to get the upper hand, and the crowd are going mental. Yes. A lot of energy for this one. Yeah. They walk past a man wearing an NWO t-shirt as they continue their brawl. Vince says, this is what WrestleMania is all about. Brawling in the fans, apparently. Okay. Before going on to say that Hitman... <laughs> oh, this, no, this was actually very good. So he later went on in the same little segment to say, Hitman and Brett the Hitman Hart going at it. Same person? Yes, it is. But he does then correct himself okay. moments after. As is always the case, when Stone Cold is on the outside, he looks to hit a pile driver, only to find himself back body dropped on the concrete stairs, which could not have felt good in any way. Mm-mm. Now the two begin making their way back to the ring as Shamrock is shoving fans out of the way until <laughs> they make it to the guardrail, which Bret Hart tosses Stone Cold over. As you said, to your point, he did a very good it job. Does. Which is probably why they needed someone that wasn't Earl Hebner for this one. I never yeah. really thought about no, that. No, I never until thought about now. Yeah, no, it didn't click until maybe now. The hitman is standing on the guardrail now and connects with a fallen, a falling forearm. Reversal of a whip sends Brett shoulder first into the ring steps, which sounds horrendous. I thought that actually looked good as well. Yeah, it looked very good. 
From the apron, Stone Cold hits a flying forearm of his own and dis disassembles the steel stairs. Before he can hit with them, however, Brett kicks him in the gut, causing him to fall in a very unglamorous fashion backwards. Flurry of rights to the forehead of Austin, but Stone Cold counters by grabbing Brett and pulling him face first into the apron. The action finally returns to the ring, and Austin is stomping away. Brett counters nicely into a swinging neck breaker, which isn't great, but the oh, that's the neck breaker I was talking about that didn't look right. I think one of them turned one way and one turned uh, the other. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't perfect. Makes sense. From the second rope, Hitman takes flight to connect with an elbow to the back of Austin's leg before he looks to work over the leg of Austin with a hamstring wrench. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to call that. I just call it a ham the hammy move that I don't know what it's called. The hammy move. Sorry. The hammy like move. trying to snap the hamstring. Yeah, but again, there's, I'm yeah, sure there's no idea there. what, I don't it know what it is. With his leg over the bottom rope, Hart delivers all his weight to the side of the knee, and as Stone Cold scrambles away in pain, he finds the time to flip the birds to Ken Shamrock. Yeah. Elbow drops to the knee, work over Austin, and another hamstring wrench further damages the lower anatomy, and they keep on coming. Bret Hart misses on driving the weight down across the leg, and JR says that's akin to giving yourself an atomic drop. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Stunner hits from Austin, but pinfalls don't count. Both men are down, but Austin gets to his feet first, only to have his leg kicked out from underneath him twice. Works. It does. It's around this point to me that I notice the crowd are beginning to turn. On uh -huh. Brett. Brett drags his opponent to the ring post, from where he applies a figure four leg lock, and it's about as good as it gets right here. So Perfect. good. And you know what? Take a big drink here, because... This is ring post. It is ring post scenario, right? but this is so good. Yeah, and it's it's executed perfectly. And this I have seen snips like. Yes. It, this is one of the moments I've definitely seen snips from. Austin is writhing in pain, hitting the canvas, and Jr. describes it as bone chilling pain, which really yeah. kind of adds impact to it. I think. Uh, but he won't submit, and the hold is eventually broken when Brett can no longer support the position that he's put himself in. Mm -hmm. As Stone Cold drags himself back into the ring, Brett is on the hunt for a steel chair. Electing not to take the one with the cool WrestleMania design, <laughs> but the generic warped one which appears to have been shat on. He's also grabbed the ring bell. When the hitman enters the ring, he wraps the chair around the injured leg of Austin and climbs the ropes. Yep. Stone Cold is up though, and with Brett unprotected on the top rope, cracks him with a steel chair over the head, causing him to fall, and my god are the crowd loud for Austin here. This, again, I know you said a little bit earlier that yep. they started to turn, but this for me, I was like, oh, okay. Yep. It's a happening. It is a happening. Stone Cold begins shit-talking and firing himself up before he delivers a big chair shot to the back. Mm -hmm. He picks the hitman up and drops him to the canvas. Big corner whip sees Brett fall to his knees and the suplex that follows keeps him down. Austin drags Brett towards the corner and connects with a second rope elbow drop with a couple of middle fingers for good measure. Yeah. After Austin stomps on the midsection of Brett, we see a child in the crowd covering their eyes not wanting to see the um, damage being yes. dished out. Nice touch. Yeah. Side rush and leg sweep from Stone Cold and fuck me sideways, <laughs> sideways. sideways. <laughs> fuck me sideways and sideways. We see a seated octopus stretch from Austin. Never have I ever seen him apply that move before in my life. Is that what that's called? I believe so. Okay. Brett will not give up. Oh, that's it. Shifting oh, done. to a match done. <laughs> yeah. Shifting to another submission. Austin applies a classic Boston crab, but again, the hitman will not submit. Mm -hmm. He reaches the ropes, and apparently this allows for a break, but there appears to be no disqualification, so this is a strange set of rules that is being abided by here. Okay, I'm glad that can, that you're confused by that but too, because weapons. I was like, how does that matter? Like... Yeah, as well, because they were wrapped around the ring post. Austin's all over the ropes. Yeah, I did. For that figure four leg lock. Why didn't yeah, that break the hole? I didn't really understand it, but whatever. Shamrock forces the hole to be broken. Austin now moves Brett into the middle of the ring before slowly and deliberately setting up for the sharpshooter. Mm -hmm. He gets about halfway through applying the hold before the hitman thumbs him in the eye. Boo. Brett fires off a series of right hands, but Austin sidesteps the charge and tosses Brett to the outside via the middle rope. Both men on the floor, and Brett reverses a whip that sends Austin sailing past a cameraman <laughs> over the timekeeper's table and face first into the guardrail. Mm, right. I assume... It's at this position that he takes the blade from wherever he has it hidden and absolutely slices his fucking head open. It's certainly a blade job, Holly. Jesus and Christ. And yes, this is the moment. I assume it's probably either in his wrist. I don't think it'd be in his mouth. My guess is in the wrist, wrist tape or round the finger. Okay. The cameras get a close-up of Stone Cold, who is dripping blood, staining the blue mats. Mm -hmm. Safe to say he has well and truly been busted open. 
Face first goes Austin into the steel stairs, and Brett is focusing on the gash of his opponent. That sounds bad. <laughs> that sounds really bad. Into the ring post now for the future rattlesnake, who is Drink. a bloody mess. Fair enough, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Who is a bloody mess as the claret continues to spread. In the ring, and Brett unloads with mounted right hands, smelling figurative blood in the water. Hmm. Backbreaker from the hitman, who connects with a second rope elbow drop. Now he has the chair and unloads with several pointed strikes directly to the injured knee of Austin. Really good, really brutal. Yeah. The fans are turning on him yes. very much so here. JR says Hart is an animal that is out of control. Okay. Good imagery. Yeah. Brett looks to apply the sharpshooter, but Austin claws at the eyes, causing it to be broken. Now, this is a boo, but it's also a boo that I'm fine with. Yeah. I normally hate an eye rake, yeah. but controversial. You're engaged in it. It's a dull, oh, don't you know? From the start, I was very much so Team Austin. Okay. Yeah, you know I've got always got from to the, pick From a, the get-go? Yeah. Wow, okay. I know, I know. In the corner, the hitman unloads with right hands until Austin swings a stiff kick to the lads, mm -hmm. flooring the former WWF champion. Good nut kick, that. Yeah. Really good nut yeah. kick. The ring is completely drenched in blood as Austin starts to fire up, sending Brett sternum first into the buckles before opening a can of whoop ass in the corner, stomping a mud hole and walking it dry. The crowd are really, uh -huh. really into Austin. Yeah. Brett is now sat on the top buckle and Stone Cold delivers a second rope superplex. We once again get a close up of Austin who is wearing a crimson mask. Austin has retrieved an electrical extension cord and wraps it around the neck of the hitman and begins choking him until the hitman counters with a bell shot to the top of the head. Yeah, very good. Good. In the middle of the ring, Austin is finally put into the sharpshooter and a bloody and battered stone cold shakes his head. He will not submit. Mm -hmm. Blood is streaking down his face, which was a shot that the company used for a number of years as it's a stunning visual. It really is. Mm -hmm. The blood is dripping from his teeth now as he tries to power up and he manages to force Bret Hart onto his face. Nobody has done that, but yeah. the hitman wastes no time in cinching the hold back in. Yeah. Austin is motionless. Ken is screaming at him, asking for him to respond, but the lights aren't on. With no other choice, Shamrock signals for the bell, as this one cannot continue. Mm -hmm. This match is nothing short of a masterpiece from beginning to end. I normally don't like the out of the ring antics, but for this match it works completely. This was a heated war and absolutely everything they did made sense. Agree. Everything they did made sense. Very much so, agree. After celebrating his win, Brett isn't satisfied and kicks at Austin's leg, causing Ken to pull him away. The reprieve is only for a moment as Brett sidesteps Shamrock and goes back to kicking Austin. The world's most dangerous man will not be undermined, however, and uses a waist lock from behind, scoops Brett into the air and dumps him onto the canvas. Mm -hmm. The hitman jumps back to his feet and Shamrock is ready to go as he goes into his fight stance, but Brett thinks better of it and just leaves to a shower of booze. Yes. As he makes his way up the aisle, he screams, fuck you, to a fan and flips them off. Oh, yeah, he did. Holly, Hello. this is perhaps the greatest example you'll ever see of a match that manages to turn the roles of the two men competing completely. Yeah. Brett entered as a face and left as a heel, with Austin completing his babyface turn by being a tough son of a bitch who refused to surrender. Mm -hmm. To me... This is arguably the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. Bold. Holly, Holly what did you think? Wow, that's very bold. Um, do you know what? I fully enjoyed that much more than I thought I would. Yeah. Really, really enjoyed it. Especially the, not especially, but especially because of the ending, I thought, oh, it's it's not really like a... It's a non-finish, but, non but it It's a non-finish, but it works perfectly. It has to be a non-finish. And I, I did love the twist of characters. Love that. Even though I was Team Austin from the start, but I have to be. I have to pick someone, so... But, but think about that ending. I loved it. They couldn't have another ending. No. Stone no, Cold because he could never have, doesn't work. No, and Stone Cold could have never given up, it so... It the only option they it had made for sense. it to work. Really made sense. That blade job is fucking nasty. It doesn't even look that brutal. It's just it keeps going yeah. and keeps going and keeps going. And that, oh, I just, all I could but think vision, was this isn't even the end. So other people have now got a I knew that would go through your head and I thought the same thing dirty as well. blood. With just everything that went, what are you scoring this match? I gave it a four out of five. Four out of five? Four, yeah. I agree with Dave. Five stars. Okay. There. I can't fault it apart from uh, 
the weird neck breaker and Austin falling holding the stairs, yeah. which just looked funny. Everything else, yeah. all, there's nothing else I'd change in that. Okay. Five stars and a lot of people are of a similar opinion. Yeah. There'll be other five star matches at Mania, I think. Yeah. We've seen a couple, but for me. Did you think I'd give that a five? I thought you'd be close. I oh, thought I thought well, you'd go four I feel and like half. four is close. Four's very good, but I thought you'd go four and a half. Okay. So, I but then again, at the same time, it could have worked against me, and you could have given it a one, and I'd have I thrown could. my phone at you. I so, could have. <laughs> no, but again, each everyone's got their own opinion, but more often than not, the ones that are considered to be universally accepted yeah. as good matches, you will also say as good yeah. matches. So you come up with some madness. Yes, I know. Like I do. Yeah. Ultimate Warrior and Triple H at Mania was three stars, which still. Disgust me. I know, and it, it's not just you it disgusts. No, we've had commenters that I have know. come back as well. I know. And, you know I, I'm in agreement with them. So we've heard what Holly and I think of the match, but let's take this opportunity to get the thoughts from one of the participants as we have some cameo audio from the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be, Brett the Hitman Hart. And then as far as your other question about uh, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13, all I can say about that match is that... Uh, it was a combination of um, really good chemistry. Me and Steve had great chemistry. We knew we did, and we had a lot of um, a lot of appreciation for each other. I, I had a, I liked Steve, and Steve was a good friend of mine, and we wanted to do that match for each other. And I think what really stands out the most about that match is that it came just the right time. Steve was at a very pivotal time in his career, and it was a very very uh, unique opportunity for me to do everything I could to make Steve, and that was my objective in that match, was to make Steve Austin, and that's exactly what I did. So thanks very much for Brett there, and I'll be honest, Holly, I got emotional, a little bit emotional, Aww. I didn't like, cry or weep or anything, but you know when like, you're that a kid hit. and you wake up on Christmas yeah. morning? Hit you in the feels. Yeah, hit me in the, like, just getting, because Brett was my easily my favourite yeah. wrestler for the most part of my formative child years after Warrior, where I didn't really understand what was going on when I was watching Warrior with Brett I understood what I was enjoying and to get something where he just talks to both of us obviously we've got we've actually got other information and yes. footage that we're going to use from Brett in another show but obviously we have to wait to get to that show mm-hmm. but everything he said in this clip about it came at a pivotal moment for Austin yeah it very much did and you could tell that Brett went out of his way to make Austin look like a hero because yes Brett walked away with a victory yeah but Austin powered out of the sharpshooter. No one does. Yokozuna doesn't power out no. the sharpshooter. So he did what the job was set out to do. Yeah. And like I said, he made a point of them having a good relationship. Yes, which, I mean, plays... In, to me, hearing that makes that match even better, yeah. really, because they play off so well. Um, I did do a little Google oh, okay. after, because I thought, oh, is there anything, any extra, yeah. you know? Um, and apparently, so Austin sent... Um, Brett a picture of yep. this match and I think I could be wrong here I think it's literally near the end where he's in the sharpshooter yeah. and blood is like trickling down his face uh-huh. and he's scrawled on it I went onto Google Images and you can see pictures of it as well yeah. and it's one of those proper like framed photos and he's scrawled on it and it says Brett thank you for the match of a lifetime this was the match that made Stone Cold it was always a pleasure and honour to work with you and he's written that and then on the bottom like in the frame as well um is the blade really yeah okay nice yeah but it's worth a google image because yeah, it's, it's interesting but that kind of shows that the feeling was mutual it wasn't brett just saying you know this is my take for it they both seem to be on the same side of the fence of the purpose of this match yeah and like you said that adds to it to me so it was, it was five star regardless but all this little mm-hmm. nuance and backstage stuff that's fascinating so yeah really good to know really good to know and I'm glad that you didn't shit on the match because there's always a no. risk that I'm going to get there really is. excited about something and you're going to go, no, not for me. No. We're not quite quite done with the Austin bit just yet. So okay. he comes to in the ring. He's regained consciousness. He tells Shamrock to leave him alone before stunning official Mike Yoda as he doesn't want help and makes his way back up the aisle as the crowd chants Austin. Yep. JR says he doesn't know if he has ever seen an athlete in his entire career as tough as Stone Cold. We get a final shot of the canvas where we see the blood is now congealing. Mm -hmm. Graphic, but really drives home the point of what we just saw. Vince says that they're not exactly proud to show a match of that brutality, and King says that Brett can't be proud having won in the manner in which he did, Mm -hmm. because Austin never quit, never gave up. 
JR says that when Austin left, what, sorry, when Austin left the ring, eighteen thousand fans were cheering his name, which is a testament to the man's guts. Nothing disagreeable no, about anything not at all. said there. Backstage, we go once more. Oh, clearly Todd, I didn't like it because I have not written this down. Todd is earning his paycheck on this night. Todd says uh, that the nation has brought everything but the kitchen sink out with them tonight. Oh, this shite. Yeah. Farouk says that Todd forgot to mention the thugs. And they say the crooks come out at night. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Farouk says that Ahmed Johnson and the Road Warriors are going to get what's coming to them. And he will show that he does even <laughs> have the kitchen sink with him tonight. Okay? It's just absolute wank. Well, granted, I was doing that stilted, but I was also kind of hammering home the point that it wasn't a good promo. No. Holly, how many of this group did you recognise? Ooh, one. I assume you saw D'Lo Brown in the back. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. No. Did you see Crush? No. Crush was in the match. Oh, God, I the don't... White, this the is... white guy with the long hair and the goatee. Crush. Shut up. From Macho Man Randy Savage's last WrestleMania match. Yeah, bruh. Oh, God, I'm so shit at this. <laughs> the two that I thought you'd notice, the two yeah. that you didn't recognise. No. Well, fortunately, Holly, don't get... Don't worry about it. We are about to enter the chaos zone. Oh, yeah. Madness is going to I know. Rain. The Nation of Domination versus Ahmed Johnson and the Legion of Doom in mm-hmm. a Chicago street fight. I'll be honest, I thought you'd hate this. Yeah. Cool. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. The Nation makes their way to the ring as PG-13, a.k.a. JC Ice and Wolfie D, rap, and I must admit... Rap. I really enjoyed the entrance in general. I, I should, I know. And Farouk looked like an absolute beast. Yes, he does. Really wasn't supposed to be a fan of this, and I was annoyed at myself. I, I like the rapping and everything. It oh, worked. Wow. I, I don't know why. Who are you? I, as a collective, them coming out. Yeah. And let's make no bones about it. The rest was shit, but this was lovely. Yeah, fair. Okay, I give it to you. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> It's not even my birthday, <laughs> eh? Although, if you are making notes for that, that wouldn't hurt. After we get the pledge of Nation Allegiance, Vince informs us that WrestleMania 14 will emanate from Boston, but he makes it very clear that tickets aren't on sale yet. Don't go and buy them now. Oh, They're yeah, not on sale. Man. Don't buy them. Now, here is a treat for the Chicago suburb fans. Their hometown team of Hawk and Animal, as mm. we get the Road Warrior pop for the first time in a long time at WrestleMania. Yes. The Legion of Doom come out wearing black shoulder pads with Ahmed donning the more familiar red number. Mm-hmm. Johnson is holding a 2 by 4 and Hawk is carrying a literal kitchen fucking sink to mock the nation, which is further cemented as the three men raise their fist like the nation do. It did tickle me, that did, I'll be honest. Yep. A little a little chuckle may have escaped it my mush. It only goes downhill from here. <laughs> I'm fucking aware. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Farouk looked intimidating, but goddamn, Ahmed is a fucking wall of a man. Beast. Well, I must say, <laughs> as soon as I realised this was a street fight, I was terrified for what this would mean for my notes with the amount of action underway all at once. So let's see how this goes. Bearing in mind, that's my live thought of before I go into this. It was like, deep breath. I'd already been stressed at the match earlier. Then I see this crocker shit come up, and I literally sat there and went, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'd have a little chat with myself to like mentally G myself so up, like for yourself up for yeah. this. So you were doing the Austin walking his way through Holly's there going, God damn, motherfucker, i got to sit there and ride notes in a 4x4. Four four. Let's, yeah. let's confirm that I don't actually say my name in the third person, though, so that's a bonus. And that's the bottom line, because Holly says so. I mean, it's fucking right, but no. As soon as LOD uh, remove their spikes, Farouk has jumped them from behind and we get a Pier 6 brawl. Animal body slams Farouk. Savio, so Savio Vega, you recognised? Fuck me, Holly. You recognised Farouk and that was it, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Savio Vega from oh, Wrestling Austin at God, the previous WrestleMania. Yes. Crush oh, was the third they, partner. Like, can't they just wear the same stuff all the time and then I'll recognise them? So I, I think I might have touched upon this before. But this is what then turned into gang warfare yes. in the WWF. Because mm-hmm. Savio Vega left and created this like group with uh, Puerto Ricans and they're called Las Periquas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Crush created a biker stable called DOA. Okay. And uh, there's another one. I'm missing something here. Or maybe it was just those three. 
to be fair, but they all kind of stemmed from okay. the, the nation group when they kind of split off. Oh, God, with these notes. However, as they leave the ring, PG-13 PG thirteen, and D-Lo have entered the fray. D-Lo is also treated to a body slam from Ahmed, but PG-13 find themselves press slammed by LOD, which the crowd really enjoy. I'm glad someone does. Clarence Mason <laughs> has jumped onto the apron, but is sent for a ride courtesy of a right hand from Johnson. Meanwhile, Hawk kicks Savio in the balls. Oh, there, yeah, there's, sorry, let's, I'm really trying to carry on my know, notes with yours. Let's not look for themes and trends, because I just oh. go from, I've seen this, I've seen oh, this. I, just, I, I can't. Farouk is beating Animal with a nightstick, and we see Crush sent into the crowd by Ahmed, who follows up by running and flipping himself over to connect with a cannonball sent on. Take it back, I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. Absolute carnage. I think I say that a few times. Mm -hmm. Animal sends Farouk face first into a trash can and then crowns him with it twice. The security guard in the crowd is furiously trying to keep the fans back, although none of them are near him, which I find amusing. He's guarding no one. Yeah. Ahmed sends Crush back into the, uh, back to the ringside area, then sails over the barricade once more with a flying shoulder tackle before unloading with a trash can shot. Okay. Fine. Yeah. There is one bit actually coming up in match that is good. Is and there? I think it is just the one. Is there? Yeah, and I'll, okay. I'll point it out when we get there. Please do. In the ring, Hawk clotheslines Savio in the corner and picks up the 2 by 4 He stalks Vega into the corner and swings down for his head. Oh no, two bits for his head, but it's avoided. And the ricochet off the rope sends the wood high into the air, which Hawk impressively catches, and that looked great. I'll be honest, that I enjoyed. Yeah, really good, I don't yeah. know why. Nothing to do with fucking wrestling. No, I enjoyed it. and the crowd were like, hey! <laughs> As you saw earlier, I can't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> when I threw my water on the floor oh, for no yeah. fucking reason I thought you meant you weren't good at catching wood okay. on the outside Animal and Farouk I genuinely didn't know what you meant oh, then. I was so like sorry. oh did you drop the water on the outside Animal and Farouk have made their way onto an announce table where despite momentary interruptions from Hawk and Savio Animal looks to complete a pile driver mm. this is the most stressed I've been seeing an attempt at this move in a while uh -huh. he doesn't get him up on the first attempt and on the second he can't get his legs out from under him so I don't know how to it's like when you're doing like a squat and you can get to a certain point you're like I am stuck in this position yes. and no further can be so he just basically has to kick his own legs out oh it's hideous Farouk's in the fine position but I am concerned and to be fair I think they're helped by what happens because they kind of fall off to the side yes. and the table doesn't table break table doesn't break yeah uh, da, 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 da. yep Holly hated this for sure <laughs> confirm yes in the ring and that's just the match <laughs> yes in the ring Crush is laying waste to Ahmed with a trash can and Savio is beating on Hawk with the wood oh dear <laughs> my phrasing <laughs> Animal cracks Farouk with a fire extinguisher on the outside and it looks like it exploded as the commentary area shrouded in fog. My mistake, he turned it on, which makes way more sense. I can't keep up with this shit. No, but I did weirdly like that we don't pay any attention to what's happening over there, but all you can see is them just sat in a cloud of fire extinguisher or Basically, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Savio attacks Animal and Ahmed with a trash can. D'Lo has set up a street sign in the corner of the ring, so I look forward to that coming into play as the six men just hit each other with anything that isn't bolted down. Mm -hmm. I half expect them to use the ref as a weapon, but fortunately <laughs> it isn't Earl Hebner, as he would have been <laughs> everywhere in this mess. Yeah. S Savio sends Hawk into the street sign, and Ahmed is thrown to the outside by Farouk. Hawk traps Savio in the trash can, and just punches the shit out of him, which pleases the crowd. Back on the outside, and Ahmed tussles with Farouk over a trash can, before crowning him with it. How many times have I said trash can? Yes. The tin, seems to be tin the foil, tin foil trash cans. Imagine doing the drinking game instead of oh, no. ring posts. Of this, you'd be absolutely fucked. Yeah, absolutely fucked. At least it's late might in the have, show. Might have made the show, this part of the show a bit more enjoyable. Well, quite. As the commentary table didn't break from the pile driver earlier, Ahmed body slams through it clean through it with the body slam. Well, he would do because he's body slammed him. So why have I said body slammed again? <laughs> <laughs> and given all the equipment on there, it actually looks quite brutal, which it I didn't did actually, that. to be fair, yeah. So it was the wood catch and that with the two good bits afterwards. Yeah. Done. Savio hits a Savat kick, dropping Ahmed, but Animal is now beating him with a trash can to LOD chance. Mm -hmm. This time, it's Farouk's turn to use the extinguisher near the commentary table, and JR says, Hell of a place to sit if you've got asthma. <laughs> so I would be fucked. And we actually then hear coughing yes. going down the commentary table. Yes. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Ahmed is being lynched. Mm -hmm. 
A noose is thrown into the ring and tied around his neck. Mm. From the floor, D'Lo is pulling on the noose, which is draped over the top rope, and this isn't pleasant to see. I don't like this. Use a cable. Yeah. Don't use a noose. N- it, it, no, I don't like it. No, do not use a noose. Doesn't do it, like, no. Hawk levels Farouk and Savio with a double clothesline, and this thankfully is enough to break the lynching, although I'm not sure how, but I will take it, because mm. no one touches D'Lo. No. But okay. Vince says that this has turned into chaos, and I'm sat here thinking, when was this one not chaos, Vince? No. Savio has grabbed Marlena's chair from under the ring, oh, which yeah. I thought was amusing, actually, for some reason, and thrown it at Ahmed, who doesn't fancy it, so just twats Savio instead. Yep. In the ring, and the street sign is smacked over the head of Farouk by an but It sounds like one of those um, musical boards that Rolf Harris used to play, the waka 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 Oh, waka. like a is wobble it? board. Wobble, 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 wobble. Yeah. When it hits him, it doesn't sound yeah, like no, there's an impact. Yeah, no, it doesn't make a, a crunch or anything, does it? Yeah. No kangaroos were being tied down in the making of this match, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Savio and Ahmed are brawling into the crowd, and Hawk is now in the noose, but Animal cuts that off before it begins. Tell a lie, Farouk now is choking Hawk, who's kind enough to tighten the noose around his own fucking neck. Yeah. What a sweetheart. The nation appears to be getting the better of things, courtesy of the numbers game, as all three baby faces are down, but Hawk yanks Farouk off the top to the floor, which is an ugly landing. Yes. No momentum is built from here, though, and the match is really starting to drift. <laughs> Ahmed starts... <laughs> as was my intention. Yeah, or, <laughs> quite. Ahmed starts choking Farouk with a noose, but this gets stopped and Savio begins choking him with his bare hands in the ring. Yeah. A spine buster from Ahmed to the leader of the nation, and that is the third wrestling move in this entire match. Honestly. Hawk is fumigating Crush on the outside with your extinguisher, <laughs> which he also fires into the air, and we hear JR say, Not this again. Yeah, I do quite like the exasperated. I did. <laughs> As Ahmed is setting up for the Pearl River plunge, he's jumped by the nation members, not in the match. I say not in the match, but they basically have been in the match the entire time. Yeah. Animal enters the ring and helps clear house, and the LOD connects with the Doomsday device on Crush to LOD chance, and Animal and Ahmed use the 2x4 to clothesline Crush before Animal makes the pin for the 1, the 2, the 3, and mercifully, this one is over after the only pin attempt in the entire match. Yeah. To finish it off the Doomsday device, the, the uh, clothesline with the wood looked awful. Yeah, it did. It looked it awful. just wasn't necessary at all. Ah, fuck's sake. The nation start to brawl with them again. Ahmed spine busters D'Lo and then hits the Pearl River plunge. PG-13 are elevated onto the shoulders of Ahmed and Animal, which allows Hawk to hit simultaneous doomsday devices on both men in easily the best spot from this set of anarchy. Mm-hmm. Wasn't even in the match. No. LOD and Ahmed can now celebrate their victory. Yay. I have very strong opinions on the rating of this match. Oh. Holly. How did you find it? I think we know how you found it, but I elaborate. I hated it. Yeah, I did. I did. It's too much. It's too. Ca- Firstly, it's too chaotic for yep. me. Get rid of the other fuckers that aren't meant to be involved and yep. just have three on three. But it makes sense why they're there. Of course, it does. But it's just dog shit. Like I just don't like it. The noose again for me is too much. Like I get, I get it, but electrical wire. Do that because all my all my brain did was lynching. I just because it's don't a mob like of people. It. Yeah, lynching. Let's be fair, an African American. Granted, the fact that people lynching them are also black, but mm. I was thinking, don't do this because it's. If do you know what, if it's r- like the cable, like um, Stone Cold used on Brett. Yeah, I'm still not a fan, but I yeah. can get on board with it. Yeah, a literal noose. No, I just yeah, just for me, it's not the one. But honestly, even if that wasn't involved, still would have been utter wank. Yeah, oh, I agree. In my humble opinion. Agreed. Uh, 0.5 out of 5. Just because I felt like... I felt like there were certain parts that... Actually, Johnson in there, the first couple of... Johnson in there, yeah. Johnson in there. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't realise that was rude. Um, <laughs> um, it's so innocent, I didn't realise. Oh, um, butter wouldn't melt. It really wouldn't. It wouldn't um, this fucking heat. <laughs> actually, give him his due, some of the moves he pulled out early doors... Very nice. And he's usually a botch machine as well. Isn't he? So, 0.5, it was done, thank fuck. 0.75, I'd give it. Yeah. What do you think Dave scored it? If he's scored it high, it's fucking ridiculous. Are you going to give me a phone? What do you think he scored it then? Oh, God. If I'm honest, I'm amazed this didn't get minus points from him. I hope, bearing in mind, the first one did. I hope I'm wrong, but this is what it came out with. Oh, God, you're going to show me. Where's it? Three and a half. 
off. Are you taking the piss? I'm not. I gave it 0.75. That's. I feel like that rating is worse than the one I gave with Ultimate Warrior and. No, no, <laughs> it's not good. But no, no, come no. on. No, seriously, come it's, on. It's bad. It's it's bad. But Three you're, and a half. But your Triple H Ultimate Warrior. There, there's okay. like you know when they say. It's, All right, I took the bullets for it at the time. You know the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Where they say, I think it's um the guy who owns the comic book Stuart. Yeah says, oh, you couldn't be more wrong. And <laughs> Sheldon goes, there's no gradient of wrong. It's either wrong or it isn't. And he said, no, that's not true. Saying, um, what is it, Golden Gate Bridge is a tomato and not a bridge is very wrong. And I feel like that is very wrong. Okay. This isn't good. No. This is three and a half is fucking ludicrous. That's crazy. Three and a half. Honestly, I, I had to check that again. I was like, that can't wow. be right. But Maybe he'd been playing the drink on the ring post game and then was very merry by that point. trash can. Yeah. There you go. Fair. We then get the same package for the upcoming In Your House pay-per-view from earlier, so I'll just repeat that sentence because mm-hmm. that covers that bit off nicely. And it's the doom 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 which I associate as Christmas for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. Because it's not. No. But my head takes Fair me enough. there. Okay. Shawn Michaels oh, makes his way to the ring. This was the biggest anti-climax of the night. Because you didn't realise... Well, you. I didn't know he wasn't wrestling. I heard the music. What did you, when he was pressing the buttons? I just thought that was a shit backstage thing. But wouldn't he be in his gear? Not if it wasn't live. Oh, okay, Most of point. them aren't live, are fair they? Point. Well, Holly, I've got a story for you here. Oh, hit me with it. Guess where I got the story from? Oh, God, that same website. <laughs> right, get shares. Buy some shares. <laughs> so this one came from the sports stuff. Of course it did. In early 1997, the unthinkable happened. Around his physical peak, and when he was one of the most over-wrestlers in the world, Shawn Michaels became one of the earliest wrestlers to forfeit his WWE Championship. HBK wasn't suffering from a publicly acknowledged injury, though he did have knee issues, but rather cited that he had lost his smile. This memorable promo, because he did it on Raw and was crying, and Michael stepping away from the title and the ring disrupted the presumptive plan for the showstopper and Bret Hart to main event WrestleMania for the second consecutive year and had ripple effects down the card. Over 25 years later, which gives you a date of when this article was done, with the benefit of hindsight, this strange moment may have actually been the best thing for business. As Bret Hart discusses at some length in his book, the original plan presented to him for WrestleMania 13 was for him to main event the show in a rematch from the preceding year, challenging Shawn Michaels for the WWE Championship. While nothing is certain, the implication, at least in the hitman's mind, was that he was going to get his win back and presumably set up the two to wrestle again down the road. Particularly in an era long, in an era long before there was much public discourse about athletes' mental health, Shawn Michaels telling fans he'd lost his smile stood out. In his book, he suggests it had more to do with knee issues than anything, but to the public at the time, this looked an awful lot like HBK was peeling back the curtain and fans were getting an insight into his actual personal life. Michael's playing with the line between fact and fiction and speculation among fans and even other wrestlers, including Bret Hart, that he made up a reason not to lose a match to the Hitman at WrestleMania or created buzz. Late new generation moments like this laid the groundwork for the Attitude Era. This iconic promo arguably played a role in ushering in a more reality-informed time for WWE storytelling. Not to mention the role Michaels would take as the leader of DX. The promo in which Michaels suggested he had lost his smile is incredibly polarizing to this day. Nonetheless, when fans look back at it, oh sorry, when fans look back on its net effect in terms of upending plans WWE was telegraphing too early, setting up Bret Hart vs Stone Cold at WrestleMania and edging toward the Attitude Era, it's hard to look at it too critically. While it may not have been HBK's intention, the promo really was what was best for business. Hmm. So, to kind of recap on a couple mm. bits there, Bret is of the opinion that Sean just went, got wind that he was going to have to lose the title at WrestleMania to Bret and went, Fuck oh, this! I I'm gonna, okay. I'm going to take myself out of the equation. Yeah. But if you think about it, what they're saying that would be best for business, if that had happened and he'd stayed there and they'd had the match, Stone Cold wouldn't have got this match with Bret Hart. True. Stone Cold was made from this match, yeah. And that, as they said, blew and developed into the Attitude Era. So, yeah, it worked out all's well that ends well. But it kind of makes sense because we may or may not see Bret Hart later again in this show, mm-hmm. and he has a very pointed comment. At Sean, 
who mm-hmm. sat there at ringside. Okay. Which now, that now was his real sense. opinion. That was his real opinion. Yes, because I remember when that does happen, I was like, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit harsh. <laughs> they had some very pointed comments towards, you, towards each other. I see. I'll mention one of them now that I think Sean said to Brett on Raw, said that Brett's been having many sunny days recently. Do you know who Sunny is? Name. Sonny was a manager, yeah, professional wrestling manager, blonde girl, yes. very pretty. Sean was suggesting that Brett was fucking Sonny backstage. Oh, I even see. Even though they they'll admit to being good friends, I don't know if Sonny has ever said it, but Brett has Brett has been honest about a lot of the things that he's done and like the disloyalties he's had during marriage. He admitted he played away from home, but right. I don't think he's ever admitted that he did okay. anything happened with Sonny. But I don't know. Maybe Sonny yeah. takes different. But I mean, I think she's in prison now, so. Oh. Yeah, well, that's, another, that's definitely a story okay. for another time. As Sean slowly makes his way to the ring, the fans that line the barricade are rabid as they try to grab and pull on Sean, which I always find really uncomfortable to see. Mm-hmm. When he does make it to the ring, he tests his knees before going into his signature pose and feigns fear as the pyro fires off behind him. Yeah, King is livid he is getting this treatment as he isn't even wrestling. Fair point. That is a fair point, actually. Sean takes a moment to applaud the fans before making his way to commentary, although as he exits the ring, he apparently puts his hand on something gross as he checks his palm immediately. He touches it and goes... Yeah. Backstage! Todd Pettengale interviews Psycho Sid. Is this the interview that you were thinking about earlier? Yes. Vince now sends us backstage where a very scared-looking Todd Petting Zoo is standing next to the WWF champion, Psycho Sid. Mm -hmm. Todd says that Sid has beaten Shawn Michaels that he's beaten Bret Hart, but tonight could be the biggest win of them all as he goes up against The Undertaker. Mm. Immediately, you know what's happening. Immediately, I don't care, and I'm happy to finish now. Sound like my missus during intercourse. (laughs) Sid is smiling like a madman before immediately going to 100 miles an hour from a standing start. And completely fucks up what he's going to say. Oh, you noticed that as well, did you? Yes, I did. Shouting and falling over his words... WrestleMania is the biggest event you all the world! What? Mm-hmm. Now he whispers, Tonight, when darkness falls. Oh no, he's shouting again. Uh-huh. He says he's the one man who is not afraid of The Undertaker or the dark. And with that, Kevin Nash in WCW says, Oh my beer. Oh yes. <laughs> Do you know what? I'd rather fucking watch a Kevin Nash promo than this absolute... And trash. He was shit mm-hmm. in his last WrestleMania promo. I literally can't hear the end of his promo as he goes too quiet, but I think he says he rules the world, and fuck me, I'm not re- rewinding to hear that. I just don't care. I, c- I genuinely couldn't hear him, though. No. I turned up the volume, couldn't hear um, him, and went, no, fuck oh, me. I just didn't care. Holly, it is main event of the evening time. Oh, Are you excited? No. Are the engines revving? No. No, fair enough. The Undertaker versus Psycho Sid for the WWF title. Holly, it's now time for our main event of the evening. Two big beefy boys ready to compete for the WWF title. Sure. I know you already know the outcome, but mm-hmm. were you intrigued to see how this would pan out? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because also I've said this before, but obviously the Undertaker streak. Now I actually remember this. Um, there'll come a time when I forget that it ends, but now that I know it's a thing... I don't give a fuck. Especially this. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but especially this match. I saw it and I was like, oh. And I looked at how long was left and I was like, cool. I was scared. Undertaker's entrance will take at least five minutes. Well, But what the fuck else happens? There was about 30 minutes left at yes, this point I and know. I went, there's no fucking way these clowns no. go 30 minutes. And like clowns is a bit harsh. Like, Taker's no, fine. Just, Taker can have a good match. I just didn't really care. My only thought was... They are two big guys, so maybe it'll be interesting to see if the chemistry stance there. is different, if it works. Yeah, well, that was upsetting. Well, you already mentioned it, but we get a stunning entrance for the dead man as we get the trifecta, dim light, fog, mm-hmm. and flashes for the lightning and the thunder. Perfect. As he stands on the ring steps, he raises his arms sharply, and the lights return, which excites Vinnie Mac more than it should. Mm, it does. JR on comms makes the point that Taker has never lost at WrestleMania, and Vince welcomes Sean to the commentary team. Sean says that he can feel it in the air. Something is going to go down tonight. You could even say it's a happening, but Holly... I know why he's here. <laughs> WrestleMania. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. 
I miss him so much. <laughs> King calls Sean a liar and demands that he tell everyone he is the o- he's only out here so he can attack Sid. But Michael simply informs that he's here as a wrestling fan and nothing more. He's not uh, wrong, I guess. Sit in the seats then with the other people. Yeah, just fuck off. I if agree. you're just a fan, sit somewhere else. Yeah, hey, John Cena did it and then ran and had a match with Undertaker. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Sid slowly makes his way to the ring and he's a very imposing man. Although he is absolutely fucking drenched. Honestly. Nothing? No. Nothing. Okay. Not even a flicker. Oh, you thought... Well, just because he's he's eating good Well, just because he's tall and he's got muscles. Your face. Blue eyes? Oh, come on. I mean, I do like blue eyes, but... Oh, so I've heard. I do... Sid, I know, Sid just... No, he's not overly handsome, but he's got... He ticks a lot of the boxes that would normally be your criteria. Oh, from a physical standpoint at least sure until he opens his mouth yeah that's true where do we go from here even though he's the heel the fans are very enthused at his arrival and he's fist bumping them the ones that are lining the barricade okay fine when he enters the ring we see a lovely pyro display that spells out the champion's name just probably to remind him to be fair in case he calls himself Diz or something (laughs) that I didn't mind that I didn't mind yep uh, as it turns off, it's slowly elevated into the heavens. Fine. Both entrances, decent. Yeah, fine. Just, if only that was it. Oh, cool. Handshake, oh, flip a coin, absolutely. you won, lovely, we're done. Could you imagine that? Yeah, flip I can a coin, actually, I'd love change that. Change the title, end of WrestleMania. Perfect. Imagine you paid for that pay-per-view. Well, fine, that'd be annoying. But... Well, yeah. The bell sounds and the two men go nose to nose. Just at this moment, we hear JR say, uh, Bret Hart's coming to the ring. Yeah. And you're like, hello. Mm. Is it going to get interesting? Mm. No. Sean says, imagine that, Bret Hart being resentful of not being in the main event and seen as the man. I find that hard to believe. Laced with sarcasm. Now, you may know this, you might not. Sarcasm is my first language. Oh, I love a bit of sarcasm. English, I can hold my own in, but sarcasm. I love sarcasm. That's my mother tongue, that's my native tongue. And I'll be honest, I think Sean Michaels had a little bit of it here. Just a tad. Just a tad. And Holly, I'll be honest, he's being sarcastic. Mm Mm-hmm. Brett enters the ring and demands the microphone as Earl Hebner tells him to leave. Of course Earl's involved. The hitman has the mic and directs his attention immediately towards Sean. That phony little faker down there. Why don't you take your pussyfoot little injury and go back and find your smile? I'll be honest, that fucking slaps. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That is really good. The cameras take us to Sean, who has Vince standing over him saying no... No. Oh, I thought he was literally no. like cuddling him. Well, he loves Sean. Yeah, he of course Sean. he's fucking loves. Did does. you hear about the rumour that uh-huh. apparently Vince fucks oh, Sean? Yeah, I've heard about this. That's I don't. I'll be honest. Most things about Vince don't surprise me. I think this is bollocks. Okay. Do you do you think this? No, I. I okay. I, 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 I don't. I'll be honest, I'm indifferent. You're indifferent. Yeah, ultimately, I don't care. I don't really care, but, but I'm I'm intrigued. But ultimately, we'll never know because okay, Sean Michaels. If hypothetically, if it happened, he's not going to fucking come out. I know. Of I'm, course, I'll be honest. I'm, I'd be inclined to say I doubt it, but you never know. You do never well, know. We're not involved in the party, and Sean's never come out and said this is ridiculous. Yeah. Which is probably what I'd be tempted to say if I heard that. But, but then he's probably been advised by legal to yes. say nada. Who's receiving? If they had to. Or at that time, though, then Sean. Okay. At that time? Yeah, so because... When's Vince giving... When's... Because Vince would have been in power, right? So Sean... So okay, he's, fine. he's in the position of power by giving. I'll be honest. I agree. He could be a power bottom. I don't quite know how the scenarios work know, from that. Know, but I yeah, know. I imagine the same. Okay. But I don't. I think that's bollocks. I yeah, don't think that's it's just happened. a rumour, isn't it? So. The cameras take us to Sean, who has Vince standing over him, saying no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Michaels reassures him, saying it's all right and that he's not going anywhere. Brett tells Sean to stay out of the match, and we hear Sean respond, I'm so scared. (laughs) It's pretty much the exact tonality that he gets on that. Brett says to Taker that since he slammed the cage door on him, it slammed the door on their friendship. So he started off so strong, and then comes out with this weak gravy. And from now on, it's a new set of rules between the two of them. Now he turns his attention to the champion, who points at himself and starts laughing, which is Sid's finest work in this match, yes, I'll be is. honest. Agreed. Brett says that Sid knows, and Brett knows, and everyone knows, that the WWF title belongs to him, and that Sid is a fraud. Hmm. Professional wrestling. You're all frauds. I love professional wrestling, but come on now. Glass yeah. houses. Yeah. Behave yourself. Brett is in full heel mode, 
as he says that he's the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. As soon as he, as he finishes, Sid twats him yeah. and hits him with a jackknife powerbomb and the crowd cheer. Yeah. A host of officials have made their way to the ring to take Brett away, but not before Sid grabs the mic and tells Brett to take his whining ass out of here. The crowd erupted once again. As Sid continues to talk trash, Taker jumps in from behind and we hear the bell for a second time. Two bells. Yeah. Match over, please. Two bells. <laughs> Corner whip is reversed by Sid. Uh, but he runs into a big boot from the challenger. Mm -hmm. Taker grabs him by the throat and tosses the champ into the corner where he unloads with rights and lefts. Sean says that he has news for us, which is a line that you'll grow to hate with his promos. He goes, I've got news for you, Jack. God. Uh, that's a, in my ear, that one sounded better than anything I've done so far. Okay. It is a low bar. Okay. It's a low bar. He informs that despite Taker continually getting shafted, hello, He's never once complained. Okay. okay. Oh, actually, that's really bad out of context, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The dead man elevates the challenger and is looking for an early tombstone. No, he hits a body slam. That earns a two count. Armwinger by Taker. And no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yep. This is way too early. It's too early, but also I don't... For me, it doesn't work with someone that's the same height as you. Just fucking push him off the ropes. I don't care. To be fair, if they lower, it's more awkward. I just, I just, I don't but know. Way too early in the match, but he hits old school. Uh, it does land, but barely wobbles the champ. Yeah. With Sid in the corner, Taker takes a running jump, but gets caught in a bear hug. Oh. And I can actually hear Holly swear God. from her flat. So fucking bored of bear hugs. This is what I was expecting. Yes. Both men are on their knees with the hold still cinched in <laughs> and we go to a split screen of Sean as him talking is more important and more interesting than the content of this match. And do you know I wouldn't argue with that. I agree. Sid is applying additional pressure to the hold which ultimately looks like deep thrusting and he chooses to release the hold to punish the back of the dead man before reapplying it. <laughs> My note just says, I'm boring. <laughs> more damage to the lower back and once more the hold is reapplied but it's only for a moment as Taker hits a massive ear clap to break the hold. However, he does then charge into a big boot before getting clotheslined over the top to the floor. Yeah. The dead man lands on his feet and pulls the champ outside under the bottom rope, but Sid powers Taker away with his feet, sending him tumbling over the Spanish announce table, and he looks as though he lands on his head and neck. Yeah. Flinch for that? Um, no. Nasty fall. I didn't care. Wow. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Oh, I, no, I'll be honest. I you think have chosen I was, death. I was past it by this point, And actually, I was more concerned about the people that he literally clatters when he gets there. Fair point. It's now at this time that we hear Gorilla Monsoon has declared this match to be a no-holds-barred affair. Well, yeah, okay. Did the crowd know that? I don't think so. <laughs> this is never announced. JR says it looks as though we are on the set of Twister with the furniture and bodies lying around. Sure. Opposed to the match that just came before it. Behave yourself. The champ scoops Taker up once more and slowly walks him back first into the ring post before returning him to the ring for a near fall. Uh, take the biggest drink you could possibly imagine because this is shit. The jamp... No, the jamp. Oh, the, cha the jamp. That's also not true. The challenger tries to fire back with a kick and strikes, but Sid regains the advantage and applies a very nice camel clutch to give him fed... Uh, fed it? In fairness and give him credit. Yeah, in fed it. In fed it. Freddo's and Fred. Oh, yes. That would yes. have made this. That would have made this better. I don't have any Freddo's. I should stock up for this shit. Well, you definitely need to get one, that's for sure. <laughs> the crowd are pretty quiet, yes. I noticed at this stage. Sid breaks the hot. Just to be clear, that's a gag that Holly's had my Freddo that I had in we the We got office. them at work, didn't we? And I ate yeah, yours. Did. Cause I you did it. ask, to be fair. I did. But um, it was the t I can't say no to you. That's, that's cruel. Uh -huh. yeah, so back, going back to the days where you used to take advantage of me, asking me to do the jobs you didn't want to, <laughs> because you knew I'd say yes, because I'm soft in the head. Uh, the crowd are pretty quiet, I noticed at this stage. Sid breaks the hold to drop his weight on Taker's lower back before he heads to the second rope, and whenever he goes to do something like this, I feel sick, given what happens to him at a future WCW pay-per-view. Okay. He goes up top in a WCW pay-per-view. It's one of their last ones. Right. He jumps. To land on his feet, to hit an axe oh, handle. Oh no, I'm not gonna like it. My like, his, his leg, leg fall turns off to something. jelly because oh, he snaps his leg. Is this the guy that I've seen in these clips? Oh, I don't want to watch that ever. To be fair, if it's the show that it happens on, we get to it. I'm skipping that part, but I don't know if they'd have it on the network anyway. That part in okay, particular. Fair enough. Um, but either way, we'll we'll manage to avoid it because I've seen the footage. It still lives rent free in yeah. my head. That. Double axe handle connects and drops Taker. 
From his knees, the dead man fires off a series of blows and takes Sid face first into the buckles. His whip is reversed though and Sid hits a power slam before getting pissed off during three consecutive attempts. Mm -hmm. God damn it! You hear him shout. Sid walks to the corner before strolling back and connecting with a big leg drop. Oof. Hogan is on the edge. They're stealing his moves, brother. (laughs) Oof. Oof, 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 oof. Two count. Make it twice. Win twice. In the corner, Sid wrenches Taker's head backwards over the top ropes, although I don't think he knows what he's doing. But when he misses a clothesline, he's hit with a leaping variant from the challenger. Mm -hmm. Taker can't build momentum, though, as Sid is back in control as he beats on the dead man in the corner. Series of headbutts to the gut from Taker, who pulls... (laughs) Suid, I've got who pulls Sid by the trunks out of the ring via the middle rope. On the outside, Taker throws Sid... Oh, I've got Side this time. I haven't spelled his name once right in this bit. Sid over the barricade, and the two big men trade right hands from either side of the barricade. Sid goes face first into the steel stairs before the champ is rolled back into the ring. Mm -hmm. Taker misses a running elbow drop after deciding to hit two sets of ropes, and he finds himself in a chin lock. Taker fires back from his knees. There's a lot of firing back, but he's not then doing much with no, it afterwards, doesn't, is there? Does it? With a series of shots to the midsection before a big uppercut to the face. Sid rakes the boot on Taker, but walks right into a power slam from the challenger. Yep. The dead man paying homage to Yokes as he slaps on a trap hold. Insert Holly booing. Boo. Sid elbows free and whips Taker, but his big boot is caught. He gets spun round and clothesline for a count of two. The dead man whips Sid off the ropes and both men connect with stereo big boots, dropping them to the canvas where Earl Hebner then commences his count. Now, this, didn't mind it. Didn't mind it, it just showed that they could both get their leg up a little bit high. That's it. Yeah, and also reminds me of exactly the same spot that Diesel and Taker had uh-huh. from WrestleMania before. Exactly. But again, I agree, this Too is big. the first moment of the show, uh, yeah. not show, of the match. No, like, I yeah. go, yeah, okay. Yeah, fun. Up he goes for a fourth time. No, I've skipped it. You have. Sid is up first and makes the cover for an near fall. Double axe handle to the lower back and Sid is back on the middle rope where he hits a further double axe handle, this time to the head. For a third time the champ goes to the second rope and connects with a clothesline for an near fall. Up he goes for a fourth time and predictably he's eventually caught with a right hand to the midsection but again no momentum for the challenger as he's put down with a body slam. Yeah. The champ climbs to the top rope and the challenger sits bolt upright to cut him off before he can take flight once more. As Sid gets crotched, King says, that's enough to make you nuts right there. Uh-huh. Four out of ten. <laughs> Press slam from the top by the dead man, and now it's his turn to climb to the top rope from where he connects with a flying clothesline for a count of two. I didn't find it funny at all, but for some reason it's funnier after. I don't know what's wrong with me. I think it's because this match is so <laughs> it's shit. Because I said you're like, oh. Huh? It was bad, and then it, it just... after I graded it, it got you. It me afterwards. Oh, well, God. maybe later. Press slam from the top rope. Uh, by the dead man, now it's his turn to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taker signals that this one is over as he runs his thumb across his throat and picks Sid up for a tombstone. The champion fights back and reverses the position and he actually hits Undertaker with his own manoeuvre. Mm-hmm. What a manoeuvre. Sid crosses the dead man's arms to mock the challenger and we get a one, two, no, Taker kicks out. Uh, Did that have you thinking for a moment? What happens here? A little, but I was so hopeful and then my brain went... Remember it, you fucking idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Sid tosses the challenger to the floor and follows him out there where he hits a right hand straight to the face. The second blow is blocked and Bret Hart has reappeared, cracking Sid in the back with a steel chair not once, but twice. Win twice. The herd of zebras descend and take Bret backstage. Taker looks annoyed at the interference and Vince says, What a loser Bret Hart has turned out to be. (laughs) Oh no, what an insult. (laughs) Loser. The dead man runs Sid back first into the ring post before being returned to the ring. Take a... Hang on. Hold hold fire. You've got to finish your chugging of the drink with the ring post. Fair enough. The dead man runs Sid back first. Yeah, we've done that. Take a goozle Sid and hits a chokeslam for the one, two, no. The champ kicks out. Sid reverses the whip and ducks the flying clothesline and is now looking for the powerbomb, but once again, Brett has run out. And Michael says, Jesus. Uh Uh-huh. And I back him fully. JR, are you kidding me? Sid pushes Taker to one side and levels Brett on the apron with the right hand, but Brett guillotines him over the ropes and the challenger staggers blindly into a tombstone pile driver for an incredibly slow one, two... So slow. Three. We have a new WWF champion, but my first question, Holly, is why the fuck did Hebner count so slowly? He wasn't hurt at any fucking point. Now, I thought that um, 
it was going to pan and Brett would have pulled the ref out the ring. Yeah, That's so why he wasn't like, counting. And I was like, oh, so no. I think I was going, do you know what? I've not really left my mark on this show. Let me do it really slow. <laughs> I wish people could see the facials you were doing then. But yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> That's a great sentence, just as a standard. <laughs> Oh no, don't break me now. We're so close to the end. Yes. Gather myself, centre myself. We're good. Taker raises the belt into the air and we can hear Sean clapping on commentary as he celebrates with his creatures of the night. Taker, not Sean. Yep. Which also sounds a little bit rapey, if you ask me. Creatures, creatures of the night. Of the night. Yeah, okay. The lights drop and we get a memorable title celebration for the dead man mm. as the show comes to an end. Thank Holly, God. what did you think of this match? Um, well, my last point says, I can't tell you how little I cared about this match. 0.75. Big Dave, 1.25. Fine. I don't care enough to disagree. Yeah, fine. So like, 1.25. Honestly, honestly, I don't, don't honestly, care. Don't fine. care. It's not the worst match I've ever seen, no. but I just didn't care. I think putting we peaked too early in the show. Putting the st- I know why they had to do it because obviously Brett comes out later, but having that match in the middle just fucks everything after it. They couldn't have had it any other way though. No. They couldn't have it later for the reasons you yes. said, and they couldn't have it at the beginning because then it kills everything. Oh, for sure. Because even the two that we enjoyed, you enjoyed the tag title match. Yeah. You enjoyed uh, Triple H and Gold Dust. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Hunter Hearst Helmsley oh, sorry, yeah. and Goldust. Mm-hmm. So it would have massively thrown it out of sync oh, yeah. if they'd done it any I, differently. I do but understand, I but it just... You. It's one of those that kind of goes... Uh, here, down, up, down, up, down, up, and fucking down. Sorry. No, that's aggressive fine. There. No, it's, yeah, you kind of were looking at me like it was my fucking personal down. fault. Man. Yes. Yes, ma'am. How did that... What kind of taste did that leave in your mouth for this show? Mm-hmm. And how does that kind of affect the overall grading? What what did you give it? I So I gave it a 6 out of 10. That would be my exact score for the really? show as well. Yeah. But I had to stop and wait and do my whole grading for the show a little while after I finished that much. Fair enough. Because That's I'm growth. That. Really, and aren't you impressed? I'm very impressed. You've blown um, your socks off. Oh. Um, yeah, just because otherwise I'd have just been too bitter about it yeah and i have even said i think i just got a little bit bored of the whole thing after the austin and brett match because i really enjoyed that yeah yeah i mean it got four stars which still isn't particularly common for you even though you no, give, it's like, not. mad things three stars i know um I, yeah again i, yeah. I was i'm ignoring because i never write down the show grade what i think i kind of do it after we've spoken about yeah. it and remembering how i felt because i feel like that's a fresh perspective yeah fair and anything less than six is unfair, but anything higher isn't merited. Yeah. So I feel like that's uh, the place where I landed. And I had that in my head before you gave your okay. answer. In terms of WrestleManias, yes. it's by far from the worst we've seen. Yeah. Is it it's near the top end of it? Nothing for I feel me. like it's maybe based on overall when you look at the ones we've seen. Yeah. I'd say this is about two thirds of the way along. In okay, terms so of the a little bit racing. higher than mid card. I think so. I think we've had more that have landed in the middle and yeah, been probably. saved by one match. Yeah, probably. Granted, this was had one big match that. But there was it. others in there. But there were moments to be like. had in there for sure. Yeah. Holly. Yeah. We finished the main event. Yeah. We've got your special segment, which yeah, we've not covered yet. We do. Who had the outfit of the night for you and why? This, I'll be honest. This WrestleMania disappointed me with outfits. Okay. There wasn't that many that I was like amazed by I'll no, be that's honest true. I'll be honest because so, usually in the other shows uh-huh. I've seen and gone that's who she'll pick straight away okay. this one I didn't have yeah. who you pick I think it could be one of a couple so um, yeah a bit let down nothing too exciting we've got two honourable mentions here okay Ken Shamrock yes and, oh wow I know you you do know me who's my other honourable mention then <sighs> this one's tough because I don't actually know who your overall winner would be. Okay. I don't think so. I don't think Triple H is in there. Goldust maybe. Okay. Because he's got spectacular Marlena. <laughs> tits. <laughs> what, a pair of walking tits, as you called it. No, I don't know. I'd just be blindly guessing. Honorable mention goes to Bulldog. Oh, okay. Basic. This yeah, is fine. this is how not disappointed, but this is how basic the outfits were. Then for, for me, me, Brett. Brett is outfit of the night. When he comes out, yes. jacket, glasses. I know we've seen it many times, but considering there's not really a lot of 
giggles and I don't know, nothing yeah, no, was out I, of the ordinary for me. It was a bit disappointing. I'm glad I got one of your also rounds and got the winner before you actually said it. As yeah. soon as you said Bulldog, I was like, okay, I know who yeah. it is then. Bulldog, just, I just liked the, I know it's just pants, but the Union Jack pants and then the, and the fringing tassels. and the tassels. Is I like it. you macho man reminders. Yeah, I love it. Okay. I think a little bit. Teeny so, tiny. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm hoping as well that now that we've come to the end of your special segment, which I'm a big fan of, by the way, big fan of, have you also got the socials that you can oh, share God. with the lovely listeners? No. You can't come to me that quickly when you know okay, I don't well, remember them. Whilst, whilst to... Holly's uh, fannying about trying to get that information, <laughs> there's a couple of things that we're thinking of doing as well. So, Are there? Um, yeah, I, I think so. Um, might occasionally as well. So, obviously, you've got different contact methods of how you can get in touch with us. With we've, we've got email, we've got Instagram, we've got Twitter as well, which we've been trying, or X, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Um, and obviously, any uh, Holly's going to touch upon it, you can contact mm-hmm. us through those formats. But we're also thinking about potentially, it might be interesting to put up polls on what shows we yep. should cover. So we'll pick a list of four, maybe from different eras, different generations, yeah. and then have people vote, and then we'll go with the one that's yeah. most voted for. We can also ve- very much heavily tilt the scales and pick four shows from the same era, because we want the show specifically yeah. from that era. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise we might always have people picking Attitude. We might always oh, have people picking hope. New Generation or Golden Age or yeah. at whatever. No, I get it. So I feel like we can mix that up and that can either be done on YouTube, Instagram. We can do it whatever. all and just... And then tally them up together. Thank yeah, that's you, not that's bad the shirt. word. I couldn't think of the words. No, no, the hand motion. Amalgamate. Thank you, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, good point. So have you got those socials? Oh, I do now, yeah. Go for it. I, the thing is, is if I tried to do it off the top of my head, I know I could, but I just don't back myself. Wintwicepod at gmail.com, is it? Perfect. I don't even have to do this. <laughs> right, what's something. Instagram then? Uh, Wintwicepod. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, YouTube? Uh, Wintwicepod. Oh, amazing. This is uh, whatever it's called. Twitter X. X. <laughs> Wintwicepod. <laughs> is that right? This is the new format. Cool. I do fuck all. No, so... <laughs> well, I didn't say that. I, I think you bring far more to the table. Walking pair of tits was my favourite quote of yours oh, this evening. Oh, good. I'm so glad. That will make a t-shirt. Um, I wouldn't wear that t-shirt, actually, because that's um, many reasons I wouldn't wear that. But yet, as you said, Sunday we've got a progress show we're going yes. to. And the next show we're actually going to be covering is going to be, like I said, the first progress show. Yes. That, well, the first progress show that we as a group attended this year. Yeah. And we're going to have a bit of backstory to introduce you to the promotion and various mm. other bits of goodies. I think that'll be quite a long episode because the show itself is long. Yes. And we were there in person, so we probably have some stories to, to regale you guys with. I'm going to be interesting for me to see it again because I'm pretty sure I missed a fair chunk of it doing yes, beer runs, beer runs like, just dicking around probably and i've already spotted a bit where i was like i don't remember this bit and then spotted i wasn't actually sat down oh, so okay. i was in the toilet for this bit fair. which is good actually because they never so far both of us like all three of us were having various runs back and forth yes not once have i seen us walk past and the camera crew know what they're doing with that to yeah. avoid the people but yes i'm very much looking forward to doing that yeah and uh yeah thank you very much everyone for listening Mm-hmm. hope you've had a wonderful time. Eventually, I'm going to come up with a professional sign-off because I still Aww. don't really have one. But until next time, take care. Bye. Bye. Until next time, this has been a Win Twice Wrestling production. Peace out.